Hey, what's up, everybody? How you doing? Little little flub there, but hey, we're good to go, right? Yeah, and, we're, uh, wel- we're welcome- getting started, buddy, on the right foot, right? I love it. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I should have started this, the sound effects for the crickets, but welcome to the first MNC Mornings, episode one. Uh, Skype lines now open throughout the show. We have, you can find us, you have to add us on Skype, MC Mornings. Just one word, MC Mornings, and then that's how you can get a hold of us and call in live whenever you want because Jay Williams, the producer of MNC Mornings, loves it, and he is absolutely off to an amazing start. <laughs> There's the producer right now. <laughs> yeah, that's, so that's Jay taking a shower. We're so early in the morning, you know. Can't, the Canadians they have a different schedule than we do. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, that was only about like you know yeah. 45 seconds late, but good job anyway. Um, yeah. Anyway, welcome to the show. It's uh, it's a new type of show, MNC Mornings. We're gonna kick it off on my channel this week. And what we decided to do was have something that not a lot of people were doing, or nobody that we've seen, which was kind of do a laid-back, more of a radio show type of uh, situation. And it's going to alternate between my channel and Mooch's channel. So next week it'll be on Mooch's channel, and uh, he'll be doing the introduction and things like that. This week, to kick it off, it's on my channel. And uh, for the most part, it's just going to be me and Mooch going back and forth and taking calls and hitting on some topics that aren't covered with the other podcast, it's going to be different things, more a little bit interesting things, some anecdotal things, uh, you know, stuff like that. And uh, hopefully, you guys will all enjoy it. And definitely, um, just a heads up: when you guys call in, because of a delay, most people, what you're going to have to do is call in. You're going to get on the air. If you have a question, ask the question, and then you're going to have to hang up. It's no disrespect to you guys. But there's going to be about an 8 to 10 second delay, and that just doesn't work out well for on live stuff. So basically what's going to happen is you leave, if you have a comment like, oh, my God, Mooch, I'm a Mooch maniac, sign my bra. You know what I mean? <laughs> if it's something like that, then you, basically what you're going to do is call in, say that, and then go. And, if it's something you know, like that, then just stay on the line, actually. No, uh, what I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Well, I, you know, Crap, great introduction. Let me just uh, welcome everybody. Listen, let me give you a little bit of the – Crap did a really great job of explaining what the show is. This show is going to come about, and I want to thank everybody for being here on day one. What you really are are not beta testers, but you're actually here to see something kind of growing. We've got a lot of plans, but we didn't want to just keep here and – fester and fester and have meetings and not put this thing together. What we want to do is we want to get the audience involved and we want you to be involved crisp and clear. Uh, initially what we're going to have to do like Crap said is we're going to be able to take your call. By all means give your Twitter or your YouTube. We want to promote the audience. Uh, let everybody know who you are and then give your question. Eventually once we get everything worked out we will be able to uh, you know, keep you on the line. But today you know, the one thing about this show that I, I, I pitched to Crap and then we kind of built it with Jay Williams is we wanted to slow things down. Uh, everybody gets up in the morning, you're making your cup of coffee, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're making breakfast for your kids. If you don't have kids, you're still getting your, your, your coffee for your hangover from last night at the club. Point of the matter is this. You want to tune in. You don't want to hear a bunch of people talking over each other. This is literally just me and crap going back and forth, uh, talking about not just weekly gaming news that you somewhat have heard about, but new topics you haven't heard about, and also just some great experiences that me and Crap have had, because a lot goes on in the YouTube and Twitter world that I think the audience is a little bit fascinated with. And you, the callers, that you call, you're not just calling in with a question and you disappear. Uh, if you're repeat callers and you become big fans of the show, uh, much like people who watch uh, Howard Stern or you, your morning local radio show, uh, you know, we, you're going to get a cool nickname. You're going to be hanging out with us. You'll be part of the crew. You know, uh, so by all means, this is a laid back, relaxed. Grab a cup of coffee, and let's just talk, man. This is what it is. It's just to slow it down a little bit. Even though, as I said that crap, I'm speaking at the speed of sound. Oh um, yeah, no. <laughs> well, that's it just is. What I do. Yeah, it's a little. Somebody asked in the chat if you would sign moves too, which are man boobs, and that, absolutely um, not. But yeah. I do appreciate. Listen, that's what it's all about with crowd interaction. Okay, you yes. ask whatever the hell you want, we'll answer it. Yeah, like in the chat box, I'm hoping to be as a little bit more interactive and keep an eye on this since uh, the producer Jay Williams is actually, um, you know, handling a lot of the, the all the sound effects. So so props to him for putting this together. He did the intro. You guys hopefully dug it with the music and the. Yeah, and the uh, intro and things like that. That I thought that was pretty cool. Not only that, but I thought that that gave uh, you know 
people were filtering in while that was going for the first couple of minutes. You know what I mean? Like we hit over we hit over a hundred while that was going. So I thought that was pretty pretty cool. Yeah, and that's why I'd like to already thank you're going to hear a lot of this. this is about crowd participation, and we really do appreciate you guys joining in. Hopefully, this becomes a huge hit because, like I said, we do want to keep this this going. I think this is going to be a lot of people are probably tuning in right now and saying, "Well, what's the difference?" You're going to see the difference as the weeks progress. You're going to see a little bit of it today. Uh, not only with just subtle intros, and we've made different uh, attempts at getting sound effects and visuals we're going to be doing in the future that me and Crap and Jay felt were needed in this kind of uh, realm. But you're also going to get the, the key thing is to get the audience involved. So like Crap said earlier, we're going to get started with the show. The, the uh, Skype line is open. You will possibly be talking to Jay Williams at first, and then you'll be coming on. Uh, again, remember, mention your Twitter name and your question or comment, and then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah. But you know, crap. Let's start with last night. Uh, I, I think I had a, a, I don't know if it's a rebirth or I got my head dipped in some holy water or what happened. But I had a really good time playing Overwatch last night. Um, what'd you yeah. think? Yeah. Well, okay. So for anybody that isn't really aware, Saturday nights at 9:30 Eastern is game nights. Um, GKB and She Wolf. Shout out to those guys. Uh, you know, they they put that together, and so we were playing Overwatch, which is free this entire weekend. And so we were, we hopped on there. That was really the first time that I've put any kind of significant time in the game. And again, it's fun when you're playing with other people, right? Yeah. Like that yeah. game mode where you push the car wasn't exactly my favorite. I more or less like the one where you're like the domination game mode. That was better in my opinion. But um, you know, overall, I thought it was actually a, quite a fun game, if if not generic a little bit. It just seemed like. Uh, you know, something that would be good to play with friends, but I'm not sure that it's a game that I would well, like to play happen, by myself. You know what happened last night, crap, that I thought was interesting, and I, we got a good response from everybody in the chat yesterday, was I said to everybody, everybody was like, wow, Mooch, this is actually a really good game. I'm having fun. This is working out. This is better than I thought, you know, based off of what you said. And I said, can I ask you a question? And two or three people said, well, what's up? And I said, did you pay for this game, or are you playing the free version? And they're like, no, I, I downloaded it free for this weekend. I'm trying it. And I said, that was kind of my other point. Point A was it's fun playing with friends, but point B that I've been making is that it's it, it, it's a free-to-play game. They should have made it a free-to-play game, and then when these new characters and maps came out, then it was DLC you had to purchase, you know, $5 for a character or, or $10 for the new character and, and map that came out every three months. You know what I mean, crap? I think some of the fun came from it being that it was free and we were playing with 12 people. Yeah, we, we all knew. We were all on the same page, except for that Tim dude, like Foxfire's friend. That dude yeah. was just like all over the place. I was like, man, that's a that's a little bit unfair. Yeah, <laughs> that guy was like just yeah. straight up with the bow and arrow, and you know, and that little tire thing that explodes and things like that. I just well, thought he, that, that he was... plays it nonstop, right? Yeah, yeah. He bought that. Remember, you, you were asking that question, like, did did you guys pay for this or or right. it sound, no, it's like a free to play game? That's what you said. And he goes, well, I paid eighty bucks for it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was thinking to myself, what did he pay eighty bucks for, though? Yeah, I, I thought it was I a sixty dollar game. I don't know. Maybe he paid. Oh, you know what he did? I bet you he got a lot of the. Uh, there's a lot of those trinkets you can get with the, with the game. So you open up different uh, treasure packs, and you get like spray paints. You get different skins and things like that. I think he probably paid for that deluxe edition. Yeah, and not not only that, but you know what? To me, that game does feel a bit like a free to play game because there's so many characters, but people usually stick to only a few anyway. Just imagine if they made that like a free to play game, but you paid five bucks for the character that you want, then I would probably right. buy a couple characters and you know hop on there and play. So, well, that's yeah. it, and that's what kind of bummed me out because I did win it. Shout out to Doc Cupcake. I won it in one of his um his giveaways, and when I did that, like, that was great, but the problem is I asked a lot of people after yesterday, I'm like, are you guys going to buy this? And you guys were like, no. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I was a little bit uh, bothered when you won that. I was like, damn it, you know, I never win anything. You know, I keep entering to win these things, and I never win any damn thing, and uh, you won it, and what was well, it, speaking of never, yeah, Well, Speaking of never winning, though, you know which one I'm dying to win more than anything? Maybe it's for the publication, not even the product. I want to win Larry Herbs. Can I win yeah. one Free Code Friday, just one? Do you know how they even do that? Because I'm wondering if he just picks, you know what I mean, and he's like, "Well, that's that crap gamer and mooch guy. We can't, we can't give them anything." You know what I mean? Well, that, that might be it. That might be. That might be yeah. exactly <laughs> it. For the same reason, people couldn't wait for MNC in the morning. Larry's yeah. like, "Oh, let's delete those two guys." Yeah. Um, you know. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, for some reason, I would like to see Overwatch go free to play, and I think that might happen because it's a Blizzard game and it's PC for the most part. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. It, it, it was fun. 
the fact that they made it a free weekend or whatever probably tells me that maybe that people were losing interest or maybe they didn't have uh, you know they didn't have the sales on the consoles that they originally expected. Uh, you know right. what I mean? What, what, this, our producer. Hey, he's he, he's there. <laughs> hey, Jay. Jay. Jay, are you here? I heard an umpire. I don't know. <laughs> <You're> like, oh. <laughs> Jay's, Jay's playing with our sound effects board. What, what, so if which, you hear a, if you hear a random rooster or an umpire screaming, <laughs> you're not delirious, and though you didn't put enough Kahlua in your coffee. Well, you know what's funny is, um, I you know I was saying I was a little bit nervous before we started the show because this yeah. was a new thing and it's not been done, and we wanted to be a success, and it's something that we're probably gonna have to build on and get people used to. I mean, the Absolutely. fact that we have over 200 watching right now is actually pretty surprising to me, because it's a Sunday morning. It's a Sunday morning, and uh, to be honest with you, today's the first. What did we do? We really just tweeted out one picture a week ago, and then we started talking about it heavily yesterday at 9 a.m. Yeah, and then we so, were like singing the theme song during game night all night, and I think that's where we get most of the, the crowd well, from. Well, we've got a lot of ideas that you're going to, again, the audience, you're going to see a lot of these things implemented. We're going to ask some people in the community to help us with this. I think uh, Crap was singing the theme song, which I hope to God he doesn't do today. Yeah, Mooch, you um, there it is, and I got news for you. <laughs> it sounded absolutely ridiculous. By the end of the game night last night, there was people that are just fans of game night, not even YouTubers, that were starting to sing it while we were in the lobby. They're like, damn it, it's in my head. I'm like, well, yeah. maybe we're on to something here, crap. <laughs> There's our producer. Exactly, exactly. This is great. <laughs> and you know what's funny is, Jay, I think, because I was saying I was a little bit nervous, and Mooch, you were like, well, maybe I'm a little bit. And then Jay was like, I have to go to the bathroom real quick, and me and Mooch are just kind of joking pre-show. He was probably in there like throwing up or something because he was he's got a lot to do. So JB JB in Canadian, I made a, a hockey reference. I said if this was his first NHL game, he would be throwing up in his helmet right now just before the show started. Yeah, but so. he uh, <laughs> Jay's <laughs> again. I'm a little bit surprised that nobody's tried calling in yet. Ha Jay, have we had any? Have we had Jay, any calls? Yeah, do we got any? Call I know we do have calls. We just I'm hoping they're able to come through. Yeah, and there's nothing been coming through yet. Okay, okay. guys, so it's MC Mornings. Uh, was it with a space or without, Jay? Uh, no, no space. No space. No space. Mornings. Yeah, so, so, so we got it. If you guys want to call in, we're looking for the... Uh, it's just... Hey, I'll type it on the chat box. The, con the contacts just exploded. Believe me. Yeah, right. <laughs> the minute okay. we said it, here it comes. Oh, trust me, crap. They know. I think the audience just didn't know. When we say it's always open... We really yeah. do want fan interaction. It doesn't mean we're going to pick up the phone every time if we're in the middle of a debate, but... Here, we have one coming in. Uh, let's take it. I can't wait to actually see. This is going to be great. Our first caller is... I, I don't know how to pronounce his name properly. It is... Hello? Bob Sassan. Yeah, oh, but... Somebody. Oh, my uh, God. I'm, so, yeah. um, what do you have to ask uh, Mooch and Crap? Um... I want to ask them what 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 they think about uh, Xbox in Germany. Well, because Germany is mostly a PlayStation country. I'm from Germany, and if you look at the marketing here, it's like not existent. From Xbox, we 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 got the 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 Xbox um, YouTube account just with eighty thousand subs. It's like wow. yeah, nothing. And we d we don't get uh, trailers in our in our uh, language. We d we get almost nothing here in Germany, and that uh, this is basically yeah why no one buys Xboxes here. And I want to ask much about it. What Very cool. Well, well I mean, I'll tell you this much, Jay. And Jay, you might have to mute him because he's not going to hear us for about a 12 second delay. But you know, I'll tell you. Let me answer your question. I apologize. I don't have your name. I'll have someone type it so I can actually read it all out loud. But you know, to answer your question about that is we definitely know that Germany is uh, the, the is a PlayStation nation, if you will, because we saw that thing crap last week, didn't we, where the PlayStation Germany came out and made that comment to Aaron Greenberg about being disrespectful and yeah. unprofessional. So, yeah, you you are dealing with something where you're going against the grain out there in Germany, and being an Xbox fan I think is really hard out there, crap. Yeah, um, I just want to take a moment to reflect that our first MNC Mornings caller was from Germany. Let yes. that sink in, from yes. Germany. That's awesome, by the way, and that, thank yeah, you for listening fantastic. to the show, bro. That's yeah. awesome. And we don't really know your name, so you're, uh, you're a Mooch Maniac German 
one. Yes, he is. Because I did, I did catch at the end that he's like, I want Mooch to answer that. Yeah, he's like, he's um, like, I want a Mooch. Screw yeah. Crab Gamer. I want yeah. Mooch to answer. You know, that's all, all good crap. But Mooch, that's <laughs> yeah. That's really what we want. Mooch, I want you to answer it, and that other guy in the purple shirt can say something later. <laughs> yeah, um, he can, he can so. say something later. Like, don't you see who's in the front of the picture? It's Mooch. It's not yeah. crab. Perhaps more yeah, to the yeah. side there. Which props Probably. to Jay Williams for making me look thinner. <laughs> Go ahead, Jay. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, do we have another call? Yes, we do. Go this ahead. Call about it. Is, uh, D i v i a n Divian. Divian, what's good, bro? Hey there. Um, I'm from London. Nice. London. Cheerio. What's good, buddy? Quite some time. Um, I've been gaming since. Oh god, 1982, and I'm always listening to this podcast. Great job, guys. We need more guys like you out there telling the truth, basically, because the meat very by you can see it with the PS. I love you shows and everything. They basically grew up on Asian. That's all they know, and they love the damn thing. And it's rubbish. It's it's you know, all lies. And the PS4 Pro reveal was just lame. You know, I'm waiting for Scorpio. I've got my box. I've had one for like ten years. It's a great um, community, a great environment, and you guys are doing a great job. And I just thought I'd call in and say, keep it going. You're doing well, crap. You're awesome, Mooch. I love your um, analogies. I always ask you for the steak or the um, used car <laughs> analogy. Always good. <laughs> Wish we had someone representing in London more. And I'm sorry, I've been talking for a lot. So thanks a lot for doing the work. And oh yeah, and what do you think of? the PS4 Pro and how it will do against Scorpio and vice versa. Thanks. Awesome, Divian. Hey, Thanks for calling in, bro. The way he handled that was exactly how everybody should handle it. That right? was perfect. And I, yeah, I want to say that like this is exactly – like I'm giddy. I'm like that schoolgirl right now. I'm like so giddy with how well this is working. Yeah. Uh, you know, the way he did it, he came in, he gave his take, and he got out. Very, very, very awesome. Uh, also, I want to <laughs> say – our first two calls, Germany and London, that's phenomenal. And um, just real quick, well, I just want to say I know we have another call, but I wanted to answer his question and say that yeah, absolutely. I think the PS4 Pro will do okay. I don't think it's going to light things up, but I think when Scorpio comes out, that's the end of the Pro. Okay, well, Jay, hold on. Before we take another call, if you could hold on, I do want to give Divian the respect to answer his question. I mean, he, he, he did also say that, uh, you know, it, they, they don't have anybody over there in, in, in England that's really standing up for them on, on any kind of publication because the media across the board has been so biased. So I want to thank him for, for, for tuning in to us and giving us a shot and listening to our voices. Um, and I do agree with crap. The PS4 Pro is going to have some sort of legs probably from November of this year till maybe February. But the minute the hype train picks up on... Uh, you know, Scorpio, that Pro is dead on delivery, everybody. So unless you don't have a PlayStation, you have a PlayStation 4, or you just keep the one you have in your home. Save the 400 bucks, put it towards the Scorpio, trust me. Yeah, because you're probably going to get a Scorpio for that price. Absolutely. Because, again, and I, and I said this multiple times, which was uh, if Microsoft wanted to put out a 6 teraflop console for 600 bucks, they could have done that this year. The fact that they're waiting is to get a four hundred dollars six teraflop console out next year. So I think that. Do we have any more calls, Jay? Uh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Let's rack them up. Rack up those calls. Bring them in. Hello, Ira. What do you have to say to Mooching Crack? Hello. Hello. What's good, man? Hi. Loud and clear. Yes, loud and clear. <clears throat> Yeah, so I called GameStop the other week. Uh, same week, uh, the Xbox One X, okay? And I said, uh, and I, I also called a week prior to that, and I said, okay, so how much will you give me uh, for my Xbox One? And they said, oh, blah, 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 went to the computer. And then he's like, oh, we're giving, it was something like, oh, we're, we'll give you $70 for that now. I'm like seventy dollars, or you know, it was like seventy or eighty. I was like, you know, it was uh, you were giving out one thirty a, a week or two ago. Yeah, one fifty. Like, yeah, we know, but uh, <clears throat> you know that the, the slim was announced, so we low, you know, so now we're not giving as much for your Xbox One. I was like, okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. <clears throat> so uh, I did the same method with the PlayStation, 
uh, I called, I asked them about, you know, okay, so how much will you uh, take my PS4 for? And this is now, you know, after the Pro and the Slim are announced. And they're still getting, you know, 120, uh, that region, for the PlayStation. So, right. you know, their, their value system, you know, they're really just... Yeah, I think, you know, Jay, I don't know if you, if you want to ask them to wrap the question up. You're cheap. Like, oh, yeah, we'll give you 80 bucks for this, but the Sonys, they hold way more value. You know, that's kind of yeah. the gist I got from that. And I just wanted to know if you guys, you know, uh, experienced anything like that or, or have anything to say likewise with that. Yeah, I mean, crap, if you don't mind, I'll take that one. Ira, yeah, go ahead. Uh, just, just yeah. so you, that's why I was really, really uh, adamant about getting the most value for your Xbox. Listen, I already had the Gears of War 4 Xbox One 2 terabyte ordered, okay? But the reason that I decided to go get the, the, the white one terabyte was not because I needed to have another Xbox One S in the house. I mean, that's kind of redundant. But at the same time, the reason I did it was because the value. They were offering $150 for my three-year-old Xbox One day one. Now, that thing could have lasted me another three years, another three months, or another three hours. So I figured the value, and I mean, don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean that Ira, who just called in, you should always just listen to everything I say. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely biased on my own opinions. But I mean, yeah, th we knew they were going to do this. The minute the offer could come off the table, we knew this was going to end up happening. Crap, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's why yeah. I went and made that move, and I got that $150. I put 150 a little over 150 out of pocket to get that one terabyte, and I know I'm going to get that back next year. Yeah, you know what? I would suggest, like, if you have an old-school Xbox One, you're not going to get anything for that from GameStop now. The best thing you could do if you really want the money is, like, maybe eBay it or Craigslist it or something along those lines because I bet you could still you could get probably a couple hundred for it that way. You know what I mean, and that's that's going to be half the half the cost. So, what what do we got going on, Jay? Any more? Call from Mason. You guys ready for another call? Yeah, I'll yeah, take let's another call, and then I also want to go down. Crap, you have some really interesting topics uh, yeah. on on gaming that I think the audience is going to want to hear. Okay, here comes Mason. What's up, Mason? How you doing, bro? Mason, what's up, bro? Hey, Mason, what do you have to say? Yo. What's going on, you guys? What's up, buddy? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, but Jay, then... you got to let him know that he can hear. we can hear him. Yeah. There's a 10-second delay. No, okay. So, good morning, everybody. It's been a long time since I've seen you guys. Uh, so, I just wanted to get one thing out of off my chest. Okay, since this whole PS4 shit, PS4 Pro stuff thing has been announced... I have been getting in so many debates and arguments with everybody with this HDR thing. I can, I'm not talking to Eevee GameWire, um, and I think someone else about it. I cannot believe the, uh, the amount of people who don't know what HDR is. Like, you, okay, so HDR is only tied to 4K TV, correct? Yes. 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 And the thing that's hilarious is when they said they were going to update all base model, all base PS4 models with HDR. At first, I was kind of like, "All right, that's actually it was a pretty cool thing." And then I was thinking, "I'm like, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I'm like, why the fuck are they updating P uh, base model PS4s when base model PS4s can't do 4K?" And then at first, I was like, "Okay, well, maybe there's going to be HDR only 1080p TVs." There isn't. So I'm going on. I'm reading. I'm like I'm reading all these comments and all these tweets. And people are like, "Oh, just go out and buy a 1080p HDR TV." I'm like, "Okay, that, that's not out there. It's there, there. There, there isn't. There won't ever be a 1080p TV that has HDR." And so I'm. Oh man, I just it just it just goes to show how ill-informed yeah. people are in this gaming community right now. And I'm not trying to say everybody or. You know, I'm not trying to call gamers dumb or anything, but a lot of these hashtag new age gamers were just arguing with me. Like, you know, like I had one guy really tell me the PS4, they're going to update, they're going to make a firmware for the base model PS4s to display true HDR. I'm like, it, it was, it's, you can't, it's impossible. It cannot be done. I mean, whatever HDR is on the PS base model PS4, whatever they do, it either it won't be true or it's going to be some kind of 
I mean, what some people said it's going to be like maybe like an altered high gamma or extra brightness for TVs, but either way, it can't be done. And these people are literally just, they're not grasping the concept of how useless, that's my main point, how useless that update is yeah. on base PS4s. So, yeah, I agree. I just, man, like, oh my god, like, I was fucking so exhausted the whole week just arguing with certain people about it, and then, <laughs> real quick, yesterday, I think it was on, uh, um, of course, Polygon, which they were the last major outlet that I stopped uh, lit, wa- <laughs> um, following, and then, you know, they're coming out with their fucking hypocrisy uh, game articles, yep. and... Um, you know, how about Microsoft being mean? Okay, for one, go suck a D because that shit has been going on the past <laughs> years. And now. Well, some goon like tweeted back, like, maybe they should release this, of course, you know, the same old reason sales numbers. And I replied back to him, and I'm like, okay, they did, they released their sales numbers, you know, during the conference. And I'm like, did that help out the gamers? And then this guy tried to, I was like, the guy that tried to say, well, it doesn't help Microsoft uh, releasing the tweets. And I'm like, are they not fact? Yeah. yeah I mean, I, to be honest with you, and Jay, let them know that, you know, because there's going to be a delay there. Let them know that we're going to answer and address them. This is uh, Mason crap. You know, I mean, I'll be honest yeah, with you. Is, it's in our, it's, what is it, it's in here on uh, Twitter. Oh, is it really? Yeah, that's that's him. That's, that's Oh, yo. Hey, by the way, really good to talk to you, man. Me and you have been actually on t- – I didn't know that I, – I know, Mason, now that you say it, that makes perfect sense. Uh, yeah, I've been talking to Mason now for – God, how long has it been? Probably two years on Twitter, so good yeah, to actually he, hear your he voice. He actually just followed me back because he uh, he unfollowed me for a long time, and then he's like, yeah, man, he's like, I've been keeping up because his wife still follows me or whatever. And Well, uh, she's a huge – if I remember right now, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, so, Mason, if I say something wrong, I apologize, but I know his wife is a huge Xbox fan. And I think Mason was trying to walk the line for a while, but I think he's finally seen this nonsense that's going on. And, and this, listen, I got news for you. Listen, everybody in the audience, you got to say more new crap. Well, yeah, the, the, the neutrals. You know, the, there's, there's there's people out there that say, don't listen to Mooch, don't listen to crap, don't listen to Zayir, don't don't watch these shows. Don't listen to those people. Like they don't know. Like the point of the matter is, is all we ever really talk about is generally just concise facts, and then we throw our opinion on top, which, don't get me wrong, the opinions are definitely comical, okay? Yeah. They, take that with a grain of salt. But, I yeah. mean, you are here for some entertainment. If we were just sitting here reading verbatim bullet points, you'd be like, and quit. You know what yeah. I mean? So, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, the interesting thing is, is, like, the whole neutrals thing, um, and just, you know, I think as far as the Xbox community goes, we are we are in a good spot because Microsoft is listening to us, and everybody can see that. And, yeah. you know, we started, like, we started that whole Scorpio symbol thing, you know what I mean? And this yeah. is... Shout out to it. Slap Happy, give credit where credit's due. Sla- yes, I Slap, Happy, Slap Happy, Happy, yep. And then I think She-Wolf was, like, the second one or something like yeah. that. And then, you know, Tim Dog, and then it kind of spiraled on from there. And that became so popular that everybody was putting the Scorpio symbol on their Twitter name. Every And then Microsoft... Started uh, started giving out pins with the Scorpio to like the big hardcore fans and things like that, and right. you know because we have that interaction with these guys, right? Look, Mikey Barra himself came on Crossfire podcast, and I even joked around with him and asked him if he was a Scorpio. That you know was great. Right. Yeah. yeah, it was great because it was he, he was he was talking and Mike was in a flow and then out of nowhere he was like ah oh, he's like I can't yeah. really <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I mean that oh. like, we all got behind that and I thought that was really cool and then the fact that you know, the Sony fans have kind of, have you heard about that? They've uh, sort of adopted that as well, right? And to me, it just cries desperation, right? Like, look, had Sony fans started that first, then it would seem, you know, it would seem that way, the same way to me, right? But the fact that Xbox fans started this, and now Sony fans are putting, like, the P for pro in their names, and at the end of the day, they're not going to get a P. No. Thing, uh, you know, a thing from anybody at Sony. Like, Sony's not going to acknowledge the P, you know? They, well, here's the thing, though, Crap. Can I just say something about the P? Okay, the yeah. P that the, the, they're doing, this is this is now the Sony fans doing exactly what the, the, <laughs> the Sony Corporation's been doing for years. Here's the Sony fans mimicking what we do, again, trying to get the attention of their corporation. We did this not to try to get Phil and Aaron. I, I was completely taken back and amazed when I saw Aaron Greenberg had the Scorpio symbol all through his Twitter-like description. I was like, holy shit. That's impressive. What is that? <laughs> Who's that? Is that J- Jay, the producer? Uh, oh, okay. So, what's up? 
I think no, I think that was Jay doing a sound yeah. effect. She wolf. Sure. Oh, it is she wolf. She wolf calling in. What's up? Jay, you got to let her know that she's live. Yeah, I can hear it. Mooch crap! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm the first YouTuber calling him. <laughs> that was great. That was great. Our first groupie, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. It was great. Thanks, you all. I said I was going to do it. You did. You did. I appreciate it. I really do. Uh, <laughs> Somebody. I'm laughing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So, quick question for you guys. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, this has to go to Mooch, obviously. What do you think about. Mario coming to iPhone. Okay, well, let me answer that question, Chief Wolf. Let's start by calling it Mario. Um, <laughs> not Mario. Uh, all Italians are offended across the uh, the globe right now. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. All right, I'll um, take it up. Thanks, Chief Wolf. Um, I, honestly, crap, that was on your list as well, and I'll tell yeah. you something. I am very excited about that. I know that you're not an iPhone user. Uh, this is just another thing that you say, and I remember Kraft's first first thing when he saw Mario get on the iPhone with the, with that Mario run that's coming. He said something along the lines of, "Why is it always a running a running feature?" Here's the thing about it: Flappy Bird, which was that bird, and then the background mimicked the what was the Mario Brothers, you know, pipes, etc. Background was a constant movement, and then you just impacted the one player. This has got a lot more mechanics to it, so there's there's more than just pressing a button. It's, it's, it's actually tapping the screen longer, gives you a double jump, using items, holds items, throws shells. There's a lot to it. Yes, there's a skill set involved, people, but you're going to see a lot of people playing this on transit, and I know, crap, we don't like portable, but if I got to play portable, I, I want to play Mario. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that, uh, you know what, did you see that Nintendo's stock went up 26%. I know everybody was talking about Sony that day. Their stock went down after the PS4 Pro announcement. Sony or Nintendo's stock went up 26%. So a lot of people that are like, um, you know, that think Nintendo's dead if the NX fails or whatever, look, they've got a ton of great IP. They've got a ton of options. Just look at that Pokemon Go stuff. And now they're saying this thing could be downloaded a billion times on iPhones. You know? Yeah, well, I, I think you're gonna see you're gonna see record-breaking numbers the minute they say that launches. And when do they say later this year, right, crap? Yeah, yeah, later this year. Oh, I got news for you. Ready? Uh, sucker number one. I'm buying it. I'm gonna put it on my iPhone. Why would I not? I, I, so would I rather play Mario or, or Kingdom Crush? You know, I'm getting yeah. tired of playing Falling Fruit in the line. You know, I mean, it's about time there's something mobile that is something that's like comforting to our eyes, isn't it? Yeah, I I, I think so as well. So I, you know, I'm I, I agree. I, th I think this is going to be huge for Nintendo, and I always thought it was funny that Sony got all the press, really, but Nintendo was the one that really, in my opinion, were the ones that made something from the day because, um, you know, it's one of those situations where they're actually going to make money off of these things, and I think that a lot of people just don't give them enough credit, and uh, I think that obviously this is. A, a big move for them, you know, like, yeah, I'm kind of happy because in a way, they're not putting traditional Nintendo games on there, so it's not like, you know, their platforms are really suffering. Right. They're just putting their IP on there on phone games where it makes sense. So it's not like they're shoehorning Mario Brothers 3 on an iPhone, you know what I mean? This is like an infinite runner, it works well on those phones, and I think that, uh, you know, I think that that's going to be, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out well for them. I, I can only see this doing good things for them. So even though I'm not an iPhone guy, I thought it was cool that Miyamoto was there at an iPhone event, I mean that's. Well, I mean let's let's call a spade a spade here. When you're talking about like, see, Apple gets to do something that Microsoft can't do. Microsoft and Apple are both very very powerful, very wealthy companies. There's no surprise there. But because Microsoft is technically in the console business, Nintendo and Microsoft are are competitors. Apple is kind of looked at as for both uh, for Nintendo, like, hey, we can make extra money with Apple. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they're not a competitor. Just because they have Candy Crush selling at a rapid rate on their devices, that doesn't threaten Nintendo. Yeah, I agree. I agree 100%. I think that Nintendo are, are kind of being very smart about this, and yeah. I think that it'll be interesting to see how, how it plays out when this thing releases later on this year. I know a lot of people were actually pretty damn excited for it, so I think that that's pretty awesome. Hey, and props to all the callers that we've had so far. You guys have been really cool. Um, just... You guys want to take his call? Absolutely, yeah. Let's yeah. spot in. Xbox, are you there? 
Yeah, what's up, Jay? There he is, crystal clear. What's up, Xbot? Tell him to what tell up? him to give him his give his take and get the hell out. Yeah, Jay, you're our you're our voice. You got to let him know he's live and he can talk. Oh, he just he just vanished. Let's try that again. That's all right. We'll, Where'd you we'll, go, Xbot? Four eighty eight. 488 or 844. You know, I'll be honest with you. I keep watching. Shout out to Mel and to Xbot. Uh, next podcast yesterday was fantastically done, by the way. I watched it last night. Um, really, really well done. I watched it. it. Was I didn't get a chance to watch it live, but it was done very, very well, and I really enjoy that. That channel has grown leaps and bounds, crap. Yeah, like he's he's doing very well with that. I, I like the way that they've got it set up with the gameplay. And, How you doing, you know, bro? There he is. Xbot, what's up? Let, Jay, let... Let Xbot know he's live and he can speak now because he can't hear us for a delay. Nice, nice. What What's up, Xbot? You want to ask Mooch and Crap? Uh, I actually, I, I, I did have two questions, but if I only have to pick one, it's going to be about um, considering uh, Forza Horizon 3 as a game of the year contender, even though racing games don't usually get considered, but with all the features that, that Forza Horizon 3 is showing, do you think it will be considered a game of the year contender? Well, crap. yeah, you know, this is this is the funny thing, right? I considered, I had Forza Horizon 2 in my game of the year contender list uh, back when that released. I thought that that was such a strong game. I, I, th I believe I gave that a perfect score which I don't really do very often. I think there's two games that I've ever done that to, and so Forza Horizon 2 was one of them because for me that game was just like that moment where you're just like in awe. You know, from the minute I put it in, just I, I love it. You know, the Forza Horizon series has long been my favorite since the original. Uh, the original one still holds up. I see people playing the original all the time because it's on backwards compatibility now, and people are just now, like a lot of people just got into it on the second one, not realizing that the first one was really even better and like just phenomenal. So I think that it, it should be in Game of the Year contention, but knowing the way the media and stuff is like that, I don't think that uh, it would get the respect it deserves. Hell, if uh, I, I doubt, <laughs> remember when Rocket League came out and Forza yeah. 6? I mean, Forza 6 is a, is a phenomenal game in and of itself and lost out to Rocket League. So, um, yeah, I don't know that it would get the, 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 the respect that it deserves, in my opinion. Well, let me answer the question, too, to be honest with you. I, you. You taught me this crap. Forza games, whether we're talking Horizon or we're talking motorsport, those are the gifts that keep on giving all year long. So yeah. you Like you Jelly of the Month. Absolutely, it's Jelly of the Month Club. But my whole point is just that it, it, you can get a Forza game, and a year later it's still being played by a community that, that engulfs the game and loves everybody that joins. You can, you're never too late to a Forza community. So my point being is is it may not ever win, quote-unquote, game of the year. I mean, let's be honest. IGN in 2012 had Journey as game of the year. I mean, how do you even – what are you supposed to model a game to to, to replicate a, a, a floating scarf that you just press forward and you win the game for two hours? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, that, that's what IGN is game of the year when you've got people sweat, blood, and tears putting out Forza games. So – I don't think we'll ever see that win game of the year, but it certainly is like you know game longevity of the year. That's for damn yeah. sure. Oh, th those games last for a long time because not a lot of people buy both Horizon and Motorsport, right? So ready for uh, Brandon? Yeah, let's yeah. go. Let's go ahead. Just tell him that to get in and start talking. They're yeah, live. Just let him know he's live now. You live with Mucho Crack. What do you have to say? Hello. Hello. Hello? Hello, sir. You're live. Let him know he's live, Jay. Hello, oh, graphic god, crap gamer, the mooch. Good to uh, talk to y'all. Uh, oh, well, last night I was, we was all on a uh, community game night playing. Bam, bam. Basically, I got a question for all y'all. Nice. When did all of y'all start gaming? What was your first system that y'all played? Go ahead, crap. You got it. Okay. Um, yeah, man. My first. Love the great work. Y'all take care. <laughs> Peace. All right, man. Later. Thanks, Bam. Thanks, Bam. Um, yeah, so basically, NES was mine. Um, you know what I mean? That was like when I first started like gaming like all, a lot. But the first game that I really played was Defender on Atari 2600, and that kind yeah. of was like, you know, a lot of fun for me. And, and so, you know, I've been gaming for something like 27, 28 years now. So what about you, Mooch? Well, I mean, a similar story. I mean, just because I, I mean, I did start playing on ColecoVision and Atari. That does not mean that I was ten years old when Coleco came out. I mean, I was, 
I was Coleco was on its way out when I actually got introduced to it as like a five year old. So I mean, I, I would say that the basis of when I started was definitely on the NES. I mean, I, I all you guys are huge, huge like Sega fans, and I had a Sega Genesis and I played all the Sega games. But I'm a Nintendo guy. Like I hate to say, it, like that's just the way I grew. And the same thing in the console wars that exist today. I was defending Nintendo against the Sega kids. You know, it was the same thing. Uh, yeah. Just so it just so happens as I got older, it seems like I by going the Microsoft way versus Sony as you know in the early 2000s, I left the Nintendo people and went to the Sega because Sega kids look like they all went Xbox. So um, yeah, but I mean, my first games, my God, I mean, I hate to be so generic. Let's just be, let's be generic. It was the original Mario Brothers. You know, it was Zelda. Uh, it was games as like uh, Ghosts and Goblins, uh, but my first games. You want to go back games that I like really lost my mind on that ridiculous looking controller on Coleco was Zaxxon. Uh, you know, I played the crap out of that. Uh, Donkey Kong, just all sorts of different games that like I even have. I still have Rob the Robot. I still have the Zapper. You can't even use the Zapper anymore. The, the on Duck Hunt crap. Because yeah, the flat classes, screens. Yeah, right. They only work. They only work on CRT TVs. So yeah, you're kind of uh, SOL on that. But yeah, I, I, like I, that, Duck Hunt was a lot of fun. I, I remember that game, and you know why that game was fun? Because it kept going. You know what I mean? I think there's like over a hundred levels or something on that game. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, to me that was that was that was a game that like re it put it put console gaming into another category. People were like, wow, I can actually shoot at my screen. You can only do that at like that that old Western game that was in arcades back in the '80s, and now you can do it at home, and yeah. it was pretty damn good. I gotta say, that's, I mean, it was pretty accurate. Boy, you gotta use your hands. Right, right. It's a big <laughs> Back to the Future, nice. Yes. Well, no. Right. See, see, we're we're almost like similar in age, so we both know. Yes. Um, you know. What, well, you know, surprisingly, I think our audience is actually older. I really do. I and I don't mean older like you know, 50s, 60s, but I mean I think our audience is definitely like 25 to 45. Yeah, our power part. alley, and and then our female audience, which is like 0.1%. You know, I, th hey, I think. Speak, we, speak for yourself. My analytics say two percent, so I got a lot of oh. European chicks. Yeah. Oh, like okay, yeah. like hairy armpits yeah. and stuff. They like so. the, they like the Italian. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you like me too. I, I am. So. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, you know. Uh, but what? What? Uh, Jay, you got another caller? Let's bring another caller, and then we're gonna hit another subject. Go. You want to get to answer the question? Oh. You want to answer the question? Oh, Jay, go, go ahead. ahead. Well, the producer yeah. wants to steal the show. Go ahead. Well, it's not just you two. You guys are being selfish. We are. <laughs> we are. We're very selfish. Absolutely. The producer, go ahead and get Slady with it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, I just wanted to give a little bit of my uh, video game uh, history. My dad brought home a, uh, a Pong box. I believe it was probably late 70s that came with a light gun where you shot the dots on the screen and you played Pong in like 14 different variations. So that was kind of what got me hooked into video games, and then of course Atari. You know, I played def I played Defender until I rolled it over, and Donkey Kong and uh, Safari Hunt and all those crazy games, um, and then of course moved on to Sega Master System, which is still one of the best systems ever. If you want to play a really good uh, Wonder Boy game, Wonder Boy Monster World is still amazing on the Master System, and and like Mooch said, you know I, I was a Sega boy. I went up through the ranks. I got my Genesis. I got my Dreamcast. I didn't go to Saturn just because uh, it wasn't something I was interested in. I was into PC gaming at the time. But right. then when Dreamcast came out, Dreamcast was superior to what PC gaming was at the time. And uh, I went to Dreamcast and then Xbox and the rest is history. Awesome. Awesome. Nice to hear, no, Jay. Right like Jay's been Jay's long time. Did you see everybody in the chat box was typing their age and you were right, Mooch? Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I mean, we, I'm sure we got a couple of youngins here and there, you know, like 19, 20, 21, but I mean, for the most part, the people that interact with me on Twitter, I mean, you can just tell by vocabulary, and that's not, you know, unless you're Doogie Howser MD, you know, most people that are using the terminology and, 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 and the way that they write, you can tell that they're uh, very well educated for the most part, and, and they're, they're older. That's just the way it is. And when I say older, come on, let's be honest, times are changing, people. Stop with the, you're in your 30s, you can't game. Like, yeah. let's be honest, when you have two kids, and you work all day, and you come home, and you get done mowing your lawn. Anybody that says you play games, be like, what is it that you do in the evening that's so much better? What you watch The Voice at uh, yeah. 8 p.m. on end? Like, <laughs> yeah. Does that make you? Does that make you cooler than me? Yeah. That you, you know, that you're watching Christina Aguilera pick a a person that's not even gonna get a record deal? I you, mean, you know how you know how I explain it to people. I'm like, you know what? A lot of people get you know do hobby like bowling leagues. I don't want to bowl. 
You know what I mean? Like gaming is much more fun to me. You know, that's it's more competitive. I like competitive stuff, and gaming, multiplayer stuff, is way more competitive than bowling or softball or any of that stuff. You know what I mean? Well, how about I take it, I'll take it even a step further, crap. Gaming's just really, really social now. I mean, did you see last night? Yeah. My wife actually came over twice, and she was like, uh, "You got to keep it down." It's like I mean, it was there was a party going on. There's people laughing, having a good time, and yet we're still doing hand-eye coordination. We're not just sitting there like like vegetables on a couch, sitting there staring at the voice. So I mean, I don't know. For me personally, I think that I think gaming's come a long way, and I don't think there's anybody should ever put an age on it. Jay, Jay says we have another call. He says it's GKB. Get him oh, in nice. here. Yeah, get, get him GKB in here. In here. Hey, what's up, guys? It's GKB. Um, I just wanted to say, great show, guys. Um, what do you guys think Recore is going to get a fair review from the review? going to do bad? What are your guys' takes on that? Mm-hmm. And what do you guys think of Titanfall to Xbox getting the marketing rights? Thanks, guys. Great show. I'll see you later. Nice. GKB, by the way, again, doing it just right. Uh, you know, come on, on speak, uh, speak clearly, ask your question. And we appreciate it. Like GKB I said, we are working knows on. How to kiss ass. That's yeah. what I'm gonna say. Like that. GKB is pimp. He knows what he's doing. He went in, asked his questions, got the hell out. And no disrespect, but due to the delay, there's like a 10 second delay. It would just be 10 seconds of dead air waiting for you to hear what we say and then talking over us because you wouldn't know. So yeah, that's how that's how you guys have to do it. Perfect example of how to handle that. And um, first of all, I've heard good things about Rico. I'm not gonna say who, Me but too. I've I heard. Can't tell, yeah, I yeah, can't say who either. Crap. Go ahead. I'm not allowed to say who, but I've heard um, you wouldn't be it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility to see a lot of eights and nines for this game. Apparently, a lot of people were saying, and this is actually very organically goes into a topic that we were going to cover, which was uh, Recore. The loading times were reported as being very high and a problem, but apparently that's not. The ant, that's not an issue because I guess there was an update or something like that. See, what happens when street dates get broken with games, you don't get the update, origi- you know, the day one update or whatever. So I guess there, there's not really loading problem issues or anything like that. So I would expect this game to get very high eights and nines. I'm expecting it to be uh, to be a very pleasant surprise and it's going to get a lot of good word, word of mouth to people and things like that. Now, as for the Titanfall thing, that came as a surprise. I think that you know, Microsoft, pro- I, I bet that Respawn saw everybody canceling pre-orders on Xbox and they went to Microsoft and was like, hey, we'll give you marketing rights for a song and that's how that kind of worked out. But what are your thoughts, Mooch? Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna start with with what we were talking about a minute ago. Uh, I have a person that I'm very good friends with. Uh, he is not an Xbox fanboy at all. Um, he got a hold of me. He said, "Just want you to know." Uh, he said, "Like 50 thumbs up uh, playing Recore." Here's the thing. I think Recore is going to be what Microsoft wants it to be, and that may be uh, a permanent part of their portfolio. Um, it's a it's a lovable female character, right, with a great backstory, basically very similar to Lara's, right, where something where something happened. I don't know, but something happened to her father, and this and that. It's a story that a lot of the masses can kind of sink their teeth in and be like, this is this is something I want to like get wrapped up in, and what's what's going on in this world. So I think that the game is going to do very well. Crap, saying eights and nines, I'm right there with you personally. But then the minute I say that, I'm like, oh, that's right. The world hates Microsoft. So let yeah. me just say that I think we're probably talking, if this thing gets anywhere, my Metacritic score is 84, and that's me also uh, factoring in the bias that that's that's going to hate. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot 80. of... I'm, I'm thinking 80 for it, um, just because I think that, okay. I, you know, I think it's going to get some nines, but I think it's going to get some sixes. You know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're going to see 6.8, 6.9, 7.1s, things like that. And that, those are from the people that just don't want Microsoft to do well. You know, Or we're going to get two out of five stars from Giant Bomb. Yeah. Uh, you know, Because the guy who hates third-person shooters is probably reviewing it as we speak. Um, well, apparently there's a few frame rate issues right now. I, guess, I mean, obviously it can be patched. But I just want to point out that um, Bloodborne got phenomenal scores, but it had terrible frame rate. Right. Um, you know what but I mean? It's a Sony so, product, so yeah. Not, yeah. So, so you'll see people probably mention the the frame rate a bit. Uh, you know what I mean. But I think that overall, for forty bucks, a new IP, it's it's hard to really go wrong on this. I'm getting. I'll have my copy Tuesday morning. Or yeah, me Tuesday, too. Or Tuesday afternoon because I I ordered it from the Microsoft store. And the reason I do that, in case you guys don't know, I buy a, a I game share. So now we, you know, my brother and I, hell, 
hammer. We uh, we split the we split the cost on multiplayer games. So if, like Call of Duty, we both are half in. Um, Battlefield One, both half in. But exclusives, I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, you know I buy them physically. So yeah. uh, you know, I, I, let me answer part two of GKB's question though with Titanfall. So when I saw Titanfall crap. Um, I got excited, and then I it was like it's like a roller coaster ride. It was the anticipation, and then just dropped immediately. So here's the thing: Am I glad they did it? Yes, because I like Titanfall to always be a household name in the Xbox community. Maybe maybe if Titanfall three becomes a thing, Vince will see where he made his mistakes, not only technically with the game, but uh, how he made his mistakes socially in social media and and representation. Uh, they made a respawn made a lot of mistakes, and I I'm not necessarily ready to forgive yet. But yeah. my point is this. Um, what I would like to say is I, I do hope Titanfall 2 does okay enough to get to a 3, but I hope 3 comes back to what 1 was, uh, bring it back to its roots, you know, get the cloud computing going again. Uh, but let me answer the, the, the question I want to poise to the audience here is I'm hoping by Microsoft getting the rights and Microsoft being very close with EA on EA Access, of course, I'm hoping that we get one of the two. I don't think we're going to get early access and the 10% off, but I think Microsoft will eat one of them, so Respawn doesn't have to eat it. I think we're going to get the early access. Um, I, I do. I think, and, and don't, you're probably going, Mooch, no, it's, EA's already come out and said they're not going to do it. Yeah, EA said that because right now they're still talking about it. So right now they don't want to. They, they can't give false hope. So Microsoft could very easily come to the table and say, listen, give our players the the 10 hour, uh, you know, uh, free play like we always do. And the ten percent off will run discounts. We'll run discounts on our end later. So my point being is, um, I do think with Microsoft getting the deal, you're going to see something transpire from the EA Access side of things. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I agree one hundred percent with that. I think that uh, hey, it's a pleasant surprise. You know what I mean? I think that uh, I think that people. I remember like Twitter was blown up. They're like, oh my gosh, uh, Microsoft has marketing deals. Hey, shout out to the almost four hundred people. Wow! On a, yeah, yeah, on thank Sunday you. Morning. Like, holy Sunday God. morning. What a great idea! That you know, I'm glad that you guys are, are enjoying our idea because th you know this is this is what I'm saying. We actually get to sit back, relax. Uh, you get to sit back with your cup of coffee. Maybe some of you are gaming right now, and you're like, "This is great. This is the only time I get to game." The kids are either still asleep if you're on the West Coast, or the kids are out doing something, and you get to enjoy a little bit of time where you can have uh, the screen snapped if you're on Xbox, listening to the podcast and playing. Uh, I, I thought it was a good idea. Crap thought it was a good idea. Jay did. Um, and like I say, this is a work in progress, Crap. We got a lot of stuff that we still yeah. have to implement. We just didn't want to wait. We wanted the show to get on the road. Yeah, and not only that, but um, is that a phone call, Jay? Do, do, I, do. I, I think what She Wolf was telling me on Twitter was that Jay's muting his mic to talk to people on the phone. That's yeah. where you're hearing that miscue. Jay, you can okay. you can stay unmuted so we can... We can hear your interaction with the phone, just so people know that you can. Or, really or just, yeah, just chime in and be like, "Hey, um, you know, do, do you guys want to take this call?" And we'll be like, "Sure, let's take a call." Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, like I, I think that's cool. Plus, guys, don't worry. I know it's NFL season, right? Uh, it's kickoff today. Absolutely. But we're gonna be out. We're gonna be done, and plenty of time for you guys to catch like the good morning, the good uh, kickoff shows, and plenty of time for the kickoff. Yeah, we're we're NFL fans too, as you can tell. Crap, wearing a Baltimore Ravens T-shirt on. Yes. Us. On his, uh, but, you know, I mean, I'm a New York Giants fan. If you don't know that, uh, you will know in the next 16 weeks. You were, you were, you were having a go with a Cowboy fan yesterday about. That was Predator. I think that was Dak, Predator. Dak Prescott or whatever. That guy's yeah. gonna get tore up. I think Dak Prescott's gonna find out what that turf Jerry Jones just bought looks like real up close. Yeah. Person. <laughs> I mean, think about it, right? Like you do good in preseason, right? But you're playing against a lot of backups and like third string and people just trying to make a make the team. And then, yeah. you know, they're not game planning. They absolutely do no game planning whatsoever in preseason. i got to say so, real quick, Assassin's uh, in the chat, and Assassin's hearing us talking about sports. He goes, ew, sports. Oh, hey, so, we did a good – hey, Assassin, we did a good joke, and don't be, take offense to this, but here, do, do the Assassin impersonation, Mooch. Oh, I can't even do it as good as you did. You, 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 had, you nailed that. Maybe I could follow yours. I can't knock, do it. Knock, knock. He's like, <laughs> who's there? <laughs> Titanfall 2. Oh, that's right. Titanfall 2 who? Titanfall 2 is better than Titanfall 1. But that, up um. That's <laughs> the joke. <laughs> that's right. Assassin. Shout out to Assassin from Four Guys with Corners. Assassin's awesome. Uh, we love his Twitter antics. He's, he's hysterical. If you don't follow uh, follow Assassin, make sure you do on Twitter, bro. He's hysterical. Assassin, actually, put your put your Twitter in the uh, chat so people can follow you. AJ, did you, are you saying something? 
Yeah, I was trying to tell you guys that Darian, uh, Darius Graves is calling you if you want to talk to him. Yeah, put him on. Hopefully he knows the deal. Hey, Darius, you're live with uh, the Metro Crap. Hey, what's up, fellas? What's up? What's, what's up, fellas? Hey, what's Apparently, Darius Jay-Z. is calling us from... Jay-Z. Uh, yeah, where's, where's he coming from? <laughs> Not quite sure. First from. off... Um, crap, thank you for doing this for regular guys. It's appreciated, but I got a question. Obviously, all of the preview or like review in Gang Spot is all the PS4 version. And right. for the next year, it's going to be the pro version. They're all going to show and everything like that. Do you think after the Scorpio comes out, they're going to start reviewing stuff? Or on the Scorpio or more gameplay from the Scorpio version and not the PlayStation version? That's, That's a great all the question. Thank you. Thank you, Darius. And that, I know who is, you are from Twitter. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that is a great question. And then good job, Jay. Like when he when he asked, just like kind of let him go. No, no disrespect. But no, that's no, just, no. yeah, that's that. I mean, that's it'll just get all over top of each other. But basically, this is what's going to happen, right? The PS4 Pro version of games is the same as the PS4 and the Xbox One version. They're just putting the up-res and things like that. Same character model, same everything. Scorpio per Phil Spencer is going to use the Windows versions of games, like the better textures, the better everything, right? So it's not just going to be, you know, an up-res of something. So that's going to be a huge difference, and I think that that's going to be the superior version because they're going to make and, – and, and I think it's going to help developers flock to the Scorpio because they're going to be able to do so much with it. You're going to get Scorpio version, PC version, you know what I mean? They're going to go hand-in-hand. Hand. Absolutely. They're going to love to do this, right? They're going to get more money this way. No, I, I agree, but I do think crap. And if you did address it, I'm, I apologize. I'm actually uh, typing to somebody right now. But did you mention that? I think once Scorpio comes out, not only are your your graphical and technical uh, comments correct, but eventually Scorpio will be the lead platform. And I think that's what Darius was kind of alluding to: is when will we start to see when they're doing let's plays and things like that when they have a, an Xbox controller in their hand? I think that the devs are all going to turn to work a little bit more with Scorpio once that becomes the mainstream. Do you agree with that? Yeah, you know. Um, you know, I I think that it's this is a situation where yeah, developers are going to be a hundred percent on board, and I think that it's it's going to take some of that you know, it's it's going to take a, a good sales bump. You know what I mean? Like I think that right now Sony has kind of some developers by the balls, but I think that that's about to change. I totally agree. Do we have another call? Oh, we just had a few more. I'm just going to wait for one to pop back in, and I'll let you know. Um. I don't like to interrupt you guys when you're on a on a little bit of spiel, but we've got Giuseppe Mazzola coming in. Nice. Follow Paisano. What's up, buddy? Hello, Giuseppe. You're live with Mooching Crack. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, just want to let you guys know, do you think when the Scorpio is out, do you think that they will use a Zen processor over a Jaguar processor? I've heard that they're using Zen... Uh, technology and it's going to have 12 uh, 12 gigs of memory so I don't think we're, they're going to they're not going to be bottleneck if you look at the bottleneck from the PS4 and Mooch who said it all along that that Jaguar would bottleneck them um, yeah, I mean, I you, said, yeah, you said yeah. it day one especially when you had those numbers uh, the uh, confirmed sheets in your hand yeah so I said I said look it sounds like a lot and it is a powerful machine don't 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 be twisting what I'm saying the PS4 Pro is a powerful machine but the fact that they are using that same Jaguar CPU, which was terrible, and it's just overclocked. So I think that that's, that's going to really hurt it. And then you look at Mass Effect Andromeda, 30 frames per second on the Pro, 30 frames per second on Xbox One, 30 frames per second on the PS4 standard vanilla. Yeah. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn struggling to get 26 frames per second on the Pro. So it's definitely a bottleneck. Scorpio is not going to have that bottleneck. It's going to be the most powerful console ever, and Microsoft is waiting, obviously. Like I said, they could have done a five $600, six teraflop machine this year if they wanted to. You know what I mean? Right. right. But, yeah. Well, crap, you said it a number of times. Let me address Giuseppe real quick. Uh, here's the thing, to be honest with you. Uh, Microsoft came out on stage a year, in, a year and a half for all practical purposes and started talking specs. 
we know that this is not the Microsoft of old anymore. So they said six T flops. They said this and that. We know crap almost for a fact that what Phil Spencer said on stage is not what we're going to get. We're actually going to get more in the box than, than, than the 6 T flops. People are saying 6.6, 6.7 T flops, which is close to 7. And then you're also talking about possibly getting that Zen is definitely going to be on route. And there's 12 gig of RAM. Yeah, and, and that's it what would, changes it, the game, right? That's what yeah, changes it, the platform. It would make no sense to use the the same Jaguar CPU. You know what I mean? The problem well, is there's not a lot of them out that were cheap enough until next year, and so I think that's one of the main reasons why Microsoft is waiting. Well, you crap! Know, Red Dragon just did a video. Shout out to Red Dragon. Uh, always keep in touch with him. Guy's great for info of, of, of news. He's not. But people think he's biased. He's not in either direction. He just reports what's coming out. And he said that uh, he said the same thing we're just saying right now. He says, "Why would I buy a Pro?" He's like, "I watched the um, uh, Horizon video they have for their game coming out in February, and he's like, the game was chugging and trying to keep a, a Pro mode uh, at 30 frames per second. It was struggling at 30 frames per second. Why would you go put $400 down on a system that's not an upgrade to what you have right now?" Yeah. I mean, I it's just—it's it's, it's it's ridiculous, yeah. And look, we did—we uh, actually did manage to hit over 400. Go ahead, Jay. Did, do we have a call? Uh, Michael Walsh is calling in. Okay. What's up, Mike? What's up, Mike? What's your question? Michael. Hey, You're Michael Muchencraft. Hello, I'm uh, Mr. Zombie Killer, and I have a huge question. Nice. Uh, Halo has series since the first one, the second one. And with 2017 upon us, will we see Halo 3 anniversary? Uh, I'm gonna let crap take that. One. Oh, good, good question. I know Xbot 489,000 is gonna be like, <laughs> yes, 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 Halo 3 anniversary. Look, I actually think we might, we will see a Halo 3 anniversary, and the reason why is because Microsoft is gonna want native 4K games running on Scorpio at launch, right? Just like, um, remember how it's kind of a big deal, I guess, that people are saying, like, The Last of Us, apparently, is going to get a bump to native 4K. You know, it's two gener. you know, it's a, it's a PS3 game, so you would figure that it would be able to do a native 4K, right? So Microsoft is going to probably do the same. Uh, the first 4K Halo game, I can imagine Halo 3 anniversary running 4K, 60 frames per second, holiday 2017, launch with Scorpio, maybe even with the console. You know what I mean? Imagine that, like, uh, launching with the console as like a pack-in or something like that at 4K, 60 frames per second. That's a game changer in my opinion. That sells that thing. People love Halo 3, so I think that that would be phenomenal. And the difference between that, I know people are like, well, you can get it in the Master Chief Collection, but p people like Halo 3 specifically. So bring back Halo 3 with all the the multiplayer components of, of Halo 3, uh, all that stuff, you know what I mean? Just fix it up. Uh, put a coat of paint on it to where it's 4K native, 60 frames, game changer in my opinion. You know, that's a good point, right, Crap? It's not a lot of work for either 343 or Bluepoint, whoever they hire to do it, to get this thing up to, to 4K 60, right? That would be that would be nuts. I mean, it's it's not a lot of money out of pocket for Microsoft either, and it's a huge fan service. I think, I think it's, I don't know, I think it's awesome. Um, I mean, as far as it coming out, do I think it's going to come out? I'm going to be the negative side of the coin. Uh, I, I don't think so. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm sure 343 is heavily invested in making sure Halo 6 has to beat the campaign, has to beat the crap out of 5, and the multiplayer has to be just as good, if not better. And that's hard to do when you've already got probably, arguably, right, Halo 5, the best multiplayer Halo. It trumped yeah. Halo 2. Um, you know, arguably the best Halo multiplayer has to be beat. That's hard when you say to somebody, hey, I'm glad you really broke the threshold that nobody could ever break. We need you to break that again. And they're like, I mean, you want to talk about taking the sales out of a company. It's hard. Yeah. Hey, uh, Jay, did you say we have another call? Yeah, x keeps calling in, and uh, I don't want to interrupt you guys in your little spiel, so I don't actually accept the call right away, but uh, he'll he'll call back in a moment. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Next spot is he's the first mooch and crap mark. That's what it is. The mooch and crap marks. You guys, he's he's the mooch and crap mark, and uh, Absolutely. and we love it. So yeah, it's it, it's pretty awesome. And uh, actually, I think I'm really like giddy as hell. I think this has really been a a, re a really fun show, a really good experiment. And I'm to be honest with you, I was like, man. Uh, you know, we'll, I, I, I was like, we, I doubt we get 150 viewers concurrently because it's early and, you know, it's Sunday morning. You get people are, 
getting ready for football and church and all this stuff. And I was like, man, I doubt we get very many, but here you well, guys crap, are. I, you know, first of all, we're, we're at 410. You can actually see the actual numbers. Uh, you know, it, the, here's my point. Listen, unfortunately, and I'm, I'm Roman Catholic, right? I'm Italian, but nobody goes to church anymore, crap. So apparently yeah. we've taken over. So everybody, please open your uh, sermons up to uh, page <laughs> 14 for Mooch and Crap as we sing Mooch Alleluia crap. to Mooch Xbox. Crap. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna have a lot of uh, you guys are great. Everybody's great right now. This is fantastic. This is working out way better than I even imagined. And you guys are really in for a treat. Every week you'll see something new coming to the show uh, that actually brings the the viewer involved. So I, I love the fan a interaction like that. To me, has been and plus people will get more used to like just coming in, state your name, ask your question, or say your comment, and then get out. You know what I mean? Like, yes, absolutely. Like I said, as we perfect things and we get new software going with uh, Jay, the producer, and, and, and getting things rolling, we're definitely going to be able to get you guys in here and then interact with you more and more. Just right now, to get the show on the road, this is working out great. Yeah, uh, and ju and ju just a quick reminder, now that we got like 400 plus watching, this show is going to alternate between my channel and then Mooch's channel. So next Sunday, we'll be on Mooch's channel and then it goes back and forth and things like that. So That's right. Yeah, we'll be alternating. Uh, worked really well when we did that six, seven months ago with BGST. We'll be doing that again on this one. So next week, we'll, and you'll know, we'll be advertising it through the week on which yeah, channel. Course, Zombie took my first question, but I do have a Where's second one. Pains to ReCore and supporting ReCore. Now, I like ReCore. I want ReCore to definitely be supported. But with a lot of people out there, they're trying to tell people that don't even like like platformers and stuff like that that they should still buy this game because they themselves want more types of these types of games on their system. Now, do you think that's fair or do you think there's other ways that people can support ReCore as well? Um, his question is a little is a little weird. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure I understood it either. But what I picked from it was how can we get the word out more? Or how you know how can we? I don't know. Did you, Jay? How did you take it? Because maybe he came in mid sentence. Yeah, he he was he was coming in. He had a couple of different thoughts in his head, and I don't know if they were coming. Going to uh, Xbot, Xbot, in the f <laughs> think it through, calm down. I know <laughs> me and Mooch are like big YouTube stars and everything, oh, but yeah, right. take take a deep breath, and then just <laughs> think. Shout out to I, mean? I want to make a shout out to uh, Sinar, at Sinar two one two Mason who called earlier. He just followed me, so I've been following you for a while, buddy. I always appreciate your uh, your intake, uh, your uh, your in-depth views on gaming and things like that, and hopefully we actually get maybe Sinar and, and, and his wife will jo join uh, GKB and She Wolf and all of us uh, on game night one night. Be cool to hear them. Yeah, he, he he actually DM'd me. He wanted to like hop in, and I'm like, well, this is our first show. We're not doing any guests in in the thing. Like, no disrespect to anybody, but uh, the phone interaction and stuff. We might once in a while have a guest, but. For right now, especially for the first show, there's like a million things going on. And Jay Williams, you could tell. Like, have you ever seen that GIF from Saving Private Ryan where he's like, like rocking back and forth? Yeah, and there's right? just bombs yeah. going off around. Yeah, him. like all around him. Like Jay Williams right now, I'm just picturing him doing that. Like, yeah. oh my God, there's so much going on. But um, you know, we're trying to make it as easy as possible on him. I'm picturing Jay Williams at the NASA controls during the Apollo 13th event. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like he's like pressing a button. He's got like half the uh, mic uh, like working at, at one part of his uh, headphones on, like just going crazy, sweating, drinking coffee. Yeah, um, he's, he's doing great so, so far, though. Do, he is. do we have any other calls, Jay? Yes, we do. Here comes BZT. I can't pronounce his name properly. All right, BZT, what's up? You're on the morning show. Well, I think what it is, I think he lets us know who it is, and then he answers the call. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Yeah, he, really he's good. gonna be he's gonna be on the morning show with Moochie Crap, Moochie Crap. Well, I like it. Man, well, the other's I, fat. I can't wait till the I can't wait till we actually have somebody else singing that besides you. <laughs> I have two questions, actually. Um, my first question is to Nooch and um, Crab Game. Have you tried out the new uh, clubs feature in the preview program on Xbox yet? And my second question is, is since Scorpio is coming out next year and another point of which no one really cares about Call of Duty anymore, is do you think it's possible that Microsoft could get the, like, 
contract with Activision and Call of Duty again to get map packs first on Xbox. Thank you. Okay. Good question. Good way, way to end, way to jump in there and ask the questions. Good quality and everything like that. Um, as far as the the marketing thing, I think Sony pays like fifty million to do that. Right to me, I don't think that's worth it for Microsoft. Um, they're they're definitely getting more third party stuff, but I think they're getting cheaper stuff, and that enables them to actually, you know, like pay for their first party stuff. They're doing a lot of first party stuff, and I, I like I like what they're doing. You know, just because they don't have marketing rights on Call of Duty doesn't mean that you know people won't play it. You know, they they actually have marketing rights on the better game, which is Battlefield One. Yeah, uh, which I'm gonna get, but I'm actually gonna get Call of Duty as well. It's strictly for Call of Duty Four because that game's phenomenal, and I'm I'm really excited for it. And what, what was his first question again? Something with Scorpio. I mean, I I couldn't remember if he said it was something about Scorp or be excited for Scorpio's launch or I I, I didn't catch the first part either. Yeah, like I, I, we have a shortest tension span, people. Yeah, we have a very short. You know what it is too is there's a lot going on. I'm actually I'm typing a lot and there's a lot going. But I um no, in all honesty, I think that first of all he came. Uh, he sounded like he was from Europe as well, and I, I'm just amazed at how many people actually listen to us crap that aren't from the U.S. And I think that that's another thing that resonates really well. Uh, and to thank the audiences because we're doing it at the time we're doing it. Uh, a lot of the U.K. and European uh. Uh, folks get to enjoy this at a normal time. Our usual podcasts are when these folks are in bed. Yeah, like this is a perfect time because they're five hours ahead of us, and so I could see, like, you know, I always get messages like, hey, greetings from the UK or whatever, you know, so I think that this is a really good option for people like that. And all you guys that are watching, man, go ahead and hit that thumbs up, man. We got over 400 watching, and you guys are being stingy with them likes. Yeah, for some you know, they got to make that more enticing, don't they? Somehow, because apparently nobody likes hitting the like button. I've noticed that. Yeah, I'm always like, hey, yeah, go ahead and hit that like button. You know, you got like 400 plus people watching, and there's like, you know what you mean? Like, <laughs> like, do we get? Do we got a call, Jay? Too late. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah damn. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I just I just wanted to also kind of uh, hit on the subject real quick that I actually. You know, I've been playing Doom, which you've been asking me to like get Doom forever, and I got the collector's edition. I've been playing it about I, damn time. Yeah, I love the actual um, the 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 killing and stuff. That's it's awesome. The gameplay is phenomenal. The problem that I have with it is there's a lot of like repetitive go do this and this and this, and then there's like like the, you have to find a key card or whatever. You know what I mean? Like that's like my bane. You know what I mean? Like I just I suck at that. You know, it's like I I spent like an hour and a half looking for key card to get past like one part early on and I was like damn but overall I think the game is phenomenal. Well what did you think though crap you see all the things I've been telling you about Doom that's like the, the gameplay is what makes it so rewarding. I know Jez was saying when he was on Crossfire that he's he found the rewarding part to be the gruesome the the hard metal rock that plays in the background. That that that's what satisfied the game to him. For yeah. me it was the speed. I know 60 frames is nothing new but that 60 it feels like 120 frames. Doesn't it does. It? I mean, it's it fast. Is super speedy. Yeah, like you can tell like, that is really speedy. Like, I know a lot of people are like, you can't tell the difference or whatever, right? But I oh, can shit. tell. Yeah, you can, you can definitely tell the difference with that. Like, yeah. it's, it's very speedy. It's like, you know what, with the Master Chief Collection, I could tell the difference when, like, Halo moved to 60. You know, like, it makes it difficult to go back and kind of um, and play the games that are stuck at 30. You know what I'm saying? So, right. yeah, it's like, it's a little bit. Now, little how bit far hard. are you in the game? Where are you? I'm, um, I'm at a place called the beginning of the end or something like that where I'm like, um, try. I think I'm like three or four levels in, or something. Okay, like so that, you haven't so. You, you haven't gotten to hell yet. No, I I, I beat the hell, you, come, you go to hell. You come back. I I thought you know the game for me personally, and I, I if anyone calls in and wants to talk about Doom, um, the game went on forever. I mean, I beat the game. I beat it on the hardest setting. It's hard, first of all. Second of all, the game never ended. I mean, it just never ended. You go to hell, and when I got to hell, I was like, hey, this is this is probably it. Beat this yeah. big boss. Went back. To whatever it was, it was an Earth. Wherever you go back to, then you go back to hell. Then you go back, and I'm like, holy shit! How many times do I gotta keep going back to hell? Like, it, it, it is. It, let me tell you something, crap. When you think you're at the end, you'll do this three or four times. You're not. So, like, don't be amazed when you finish a big boss. Your palms are sweating. You're, you're like, literally, you need a Gatorade after the damn match, and then you're like, well, let's see the ending credits, and they're like, back to Earth, and you're like, fuck, that's crazy. It's amazing. The game just keeps going on and on and on. Yeah. So it is interesting. It looks like we have a caller, repeat caller, oh. our first caller. Yes, you want Tom to... Sesame calling back. 
Yeah, go ahead and uh, and get him on when you can. Anybody else that wants to call in, we're in the last 10 minutes of the show. Uh, if you guys want to call in or talk to him or just ask a question real quick. Okay, what's up? You got to tell him he's live. Um, yeah, Mike, let him know. Um, I, I hear you guys a lot of talking about Titanfall, Gears of War 4, Reaper, and uh, Forza, but nobody is talking about Dead Rising 4. That's a good point. That is a good point. I have it pre-ordered. I'm excited well, for it. Well, you know, good point. Uh, to be honest with you, crap, you've mentioned it, but you're the only one. I got to be honest, you're the only one really that's been talking it up. Yeah. Um, I, the that, thing about Dead Dead Rising to me coming because we know you're a fan. I'm I'm a fan, but I'm not an Uber fan. Am I gonna get it? Probably. I'm just saying that like I, uh, they I I got to see more of it because if it's just Dead Rising three cleaned up. I don't know if that's enough for me. I, I wanted to just do a little bit more. To me, you know what I'm getting? Tell me if you feel this. Uh, I'm getting a Dead Rising 3 blended with, um, oh god, what's that Grand Theft Auto rip, rip off? That Saints Row. It's like Saints Row meets Dead Rising. Do you, do you see that in this one or no? Um... You know what? I think they are going a little bit back to like the fun of it. Like yes. Dead Rising Three was like it had some fun stuff with the bosses and stuff, but it was a little bit more serious. I think they're going back to like the goopy stuff, which I don't mind because no, I fine. think I think like the hardcore zombie stuff is a little bit. Uh, you know, there's a lot of that out there. So having just having fun with zombie games is something that I'm interested in. And plus the co-op aspect, I, I like that. You know what I mean? Like I want to play through it with somebody. Okay, hey, you know what? Real quick, I want to go back to BZT who called in. He just tweeted me on Twitter. He said, my first question was about, have you guys used the club feature yet? Um, thank you for re repeating that because uh, pardon me for not remembering it. Um, let me just say, I want to answer because I have, first of all, my because of my Xbox One S, I forgot to go in and re-register for the preview program, so I'm, I'm in pending right now. Uh, hopefully I'll get that today. But my point is is that I haven't used the clubs thing yet and oh, I, that I was the question that guy asked earlier. Yeah, that's what he just wrote just, me. Yeah, just like yeah, just like totally like registered. So, um, what do you think, crap? I mean, you you speak to it a little bit. I haven't used it yet, and I know you even have one. And shame on me, I haven't joined your club yet. I will. Yeah. Uh, but I don't see the use in it. What what what's the big deal with the okay, club? Okay, okay. Well, clubs are a way that you can keep in touch with people, right? Like you can start a club. Which, by the way, if you guys are looking and you guys have the preview pre program, you can look for Xbox Nation Club, and that's mine. And then you can follow and uh, request to join, and then I'll send you guys a. Uh, a, uh, a request back. It's weird how they do that. You have to invite them back or whatever. So, um, you know, that's an interesting situation. But I enjoy it because what happens is it's a good way to keep in touch with people that, you know, like your fans, Mooch. Uh, you know, ones that maybe you don't you don't want to add. Like, I don't like to add a bunch of people. Like, I let people follow me. I have like over four thousand followers on Xbox Live. I don't want to. You can't add that many back. So this is a good way, a club where I can keep in touch with the people and like they can interact with me. But I don't have to like load up my friends list with people that I'm that most likely I'm not going to play with much. You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, is, but is that what it ends up being though? Because like you, you listen, everyone that's made a club, okay, nobody wants to be like, no, you know, you don't shun anybody. So you've made it open to the public, you know, eighteen and over, all languages welcome. They still and have to like, request, and you still have to approve it. Oh, okay. They okay. can follow you, but they can't actually be in the club unless you request it. So we got another call. Uh, graphic God. The Sorry, graphic guy. He hung up. He, he got tired of waiting. Oh, okay. Warp, warp, warp. I mean, no, we yeah, we apologize to people that. Uh, th no, I understand that. You don't want to sit there and wait forever, but we do want to address other questions too. Yeah, you know? that, that that is true. Um, <laughs> yeah. So so I actually I like it, and you can also like do a party with you with whoever like a quick party, and okay. like. Uh, Sorry, I know I talked to you guys again. One more question for this whole price point, Scorpio. I know they're going to have a lot of stuff in it. You know, I mean, for when you guys are talking about design and 12 gigs of RAM and VR ready, do you guys think? I was actually thinking between seven and eight hundred. Could just go off of what Andrew Greenberg said about being a premium game device. Yeah. It would be between seven and eight hundred, or I have people telling me it's going to be five. To me, I think Microsoft has the power and the money to take a hit like that to even make it below a thousand. But what do you guys think on the price range? And who's honey digging? <laughs> I didn't hear that last part. He screamed out, but that was funny. Um, crap, do you want me to <laughs> well, take it away? Well, hold on. Like, they say premium because it's, it is going to be premium, but people, again, I've already said this like a million times. 
they could have came out with a six teraflop machine this year for six hundred dollars. They're waiting because these things are coming with uh, the the cheaper, better parts next year. So you're going to see probably a four hundred dollar version and a five hundred dollar version. Book that in, man. I'm telling you, one terabyte, one terabyte for four three ninety nine, two terabyte four ninety nine. Lock it in. Well, listen. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say this crap. I'm, every day that goes by, I'm agreeing with you more and more, but I'm still a bit hesitant. I I understand where the caller was coming in and saying that because we were told that you know don't expect this to be an El Cheapo because it is a premium product, and every single time we turn the, turn around crap, you're getting news. We're all getting news that this box is getting this this Xbox Scorpio is getting stronger and stronger. So with that being said. And you know, I I don't think there will be a one terabyte. I think the entry level will be a two terabyte. Uh, I think that this thing is not going to be four hundred. I, I think it's going to be. I, I think the intro price is four ninety nine. And and I know what we talked about the other day. I understand where you're coming from, crap. But here's the thing. In all honesty, this thing has to be five hundred bucks. It doesn't need to compete with the pro. It kills the pro. Well, you yeah, can't... but check this out. Next year, the pro is going to go down to three fifty. Yeah, but the Pro is an Xbox One S. Yes, but it's going to go down to three fifty. I'm telling you. That's you fine. So the Pro, the Pro will be the Pro will be two uh, three fifty, right? And then the the S will be two hundred, and the Scorpio will be five hundred. It's it's a different world. I don't think it needs to compete. I do. I but but look, Sony is pitching it like it's got to compete, right? With that whole four K narrative, like the the yeah, average person, because they they are lying. Like you see the articles, how Sony's doing four K without actually doing four K. Like that, I, I I'm not kidding. That is a legit article. That's going on right now, right? Um, how to how Sony is doing 4K without doing 4K? Like that is seriously, and people are sitting there going, "Hey, um, you know what I mean?" They're thinking that's a 4K thing. That's they're marketing that as their 4K machine. Microsoft is going to market theirs as the 4K machine, and so you know we're going to have to come up with a situation where it's going to have to be competitive with price. You can't be $150 more than that, and I can guarantee they're going to drop it by 50 next year. Um, to compete, so I did. They probably you make, you make a great point, crap. Yeah. You really do. But I mean, realistically, when it you said it yourself, look, I'll agree with you if you'll agree with me. I don't think Microsoft wants to make any money on the Scorpio. I think they want to break even and get those boxes in the house. Once it's in the home, people will start buying because they're going to see the difference in graphical capability. And like a worry said on Crossfire the other day, and many people have said, it's about graphics are not resolution. But this this 12 gig of RAM that Microsoft's going to be putting in this beast of a box, we're going to see a graphical boost here for the first time as console owners. So do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah. I, I, they're going to break even at 400. They're not going to make a red cent. They may even lose like 15, 20 bucks on 400. But if that's what you think, uh, you know, you are right. Sony's getting the media to help them again. I, I mean, can you can you repeat that headline again, please? Because I want to actually enjoy it while I take a sip of coffee. Yeah, it's um how 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 uh, the PS4 Pro does 4K without actually doing 4K. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? That's yes. almost and, like something like a painting from Monet. Yeah, and uh, the same guy wrote an article about Quantum Break about how it was 720p. And, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's the the hypocrite that that bashed the 720p process that they went through in order to get the the uh, 1080p. But but the checkerboard uh, process that they're using for for 4K on Pro is completely acceptable. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, here it is. How Sony's PlayStation 4 Pro does 4K without delivering actual 4K. And here's another one. Forget 4K Blu-ray. As a diehard PC gamer, I'm hugely impressed by the PS4 Pro. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, seriously, yes. Um, that is really amazing. Oh, Not, there we uh, go. Producer coming in with a couple of sounds. We're going to have, we have a um, huge uh, sound effect reel that we're going to be, that's something that was a work in progress. I think next week we'll have that up to 100%. But uh, if you hear random uh, sound effects, we're just trying new stuff out. Um, Jay, do we got any more callers? Uh, no, no more callers. Okay, well, I mean, look, it's almost like noon. Yeah, it's noon. Um, yeah, it is. It's like eleven fifty nine. Now, crap yeah. is next week. Uh, so we're still on for ten thirty. I know that. That's I just want to make sure we're confirmed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be either ten thirty or eleven. Um, it will definitely be just because you know, just with the work schedule and situation like that, I'm going to try to um, be there as much as possible to keep it a steady time. You know what I mean? It, it just kind of depends. Wow, now we almost have four fifty. Almost don't want to end the show. 
You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I know. So, I, uh, but you know, the, this is the good news, everybody. We wanted to make it so that MNC in the morning doesn't interfere, especially with a lot of people's football addiction. I know a lot of people say, oh, sports, we don't do sports. We're not going to be talking much sports at all on this channel at all, pretty much less than 1%. But the point of the matter is, is that uh, we do know a lot of you have a lot of stuff going on with your families. Uh, if we do get feedback over the week, though, that you want it longer, I mean, crap, I'm willing to go longer in the future. I know that we talked about making it an hour and a half, but it's, yeah. it's completely... Well, I mean, look, look, look at how many people we have here right now. Do you, I mean... Yeah, 450 uh, people, is uh, that's impressive. Hey, I mean, look, if you guys... What do you guys want to take it, another 15, 20 minutes? Yeah, we got another 15, 20 minutes. Get another couple phone calls in here. Uh, we'll answer another question or two, and then uh, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah. So so yeah. Okay. So yeah, we're gonna take it a little bit long, and then you guys call us in. Let us know. Let us know if you guys like the show. That's what we gotta do. Give us validation. Let let it mark out a little bit. Let us know that you like the show. That you think it's a good idea. Um, what you what you want to see in the show in the future? What would you like like to see us cover? Uh, what would you change? Give us a little bit of feedback. You know what I mean? I would love to uh, hear what you guys think. So give us a call. Yeah, MC this- mornings. Yeah, you know, this show really is about the people, right, Crap? So we want to hear from them. Okay, and we've got... Uh, let's go. We have Josie on the line. Josie, what's up? You're live. Let them know, Jay. you gotta, you got to say it every time. Yeah. Oh, am I live now or not? Yes. Okay, I guess I'm live. All right, the question is... Okay, the question is... Uh, Address a video addressing the whole digital foundry the, and uh, how the checkerboard is amazing. Hmm. Jay, ask him to repeat that again. Yeah. Oh, oh he hung up. Okay. Bad, bad connection there. Like uh, something about digital foundry. So I'm gonna say that um, digital foundry is. Oh, oh. Is that him calling back? No, this is now Roberts. Well, okay, put him on. Off. Yeah, tell tell him to put him on. Let let us know how we're doing. That that's what I want to hear. I want I want validation. Hey, how are you? <clears throat> I'm a guy from Latvia, so I hope you understand my English. It's not my first language. Very. But clear. what I want to say here back home, Xbox really dominates the market, not the PlayStation. Right. Uh, I own Xbox One. I just ordered the Xbox One S. Uh, I'm going to buy the record. Uh, and he hung up. Uh, he well, got, but no, listen, I think he was basically validating the fact that he's an Xbox fan and he's in yeah. Latvia. Latvia. Um, okay, well, well, what's interesting is we're getting all these calls from, like, other places. It's it's very interesting, you know what I mean? It's awesome. I mean, I'm glad to hear that. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know me, uh, you know, waving my American flag, especially today. I would, we'll do something at the end for our, our uh, falling at 9-11. Today is a, a, a day to remember for sure. Yeah, 15 years um, ago. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, it's wild. It felt like yesterday. Who, who do we got, Jay? Jay, who do we got on? We got somebody, I'm sure. There, everybody's dying to get on. Mooch and crap, mooch and crap. One is thin and the other is fat. Talk about <laughs> this and that. Pretty sure you're gonna get a copyright for that. <laughs> no, it's a parody. Oh, is it a parody? You can do that. Great. Yeah, it's just parody. I mean, look, like, like we could do name that song and just like talk the lyrics or whatever, and you'd sure. be fine. You know what I mean? Like nothing, you know. It, 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 it's all good. It, like you can hear, you can hear Jay Williams. Like he's like, "Hey, what's up, people? You got to call in. Just be like ready to go on. State your name, your question, mark out. Be like, "Hey, Mooch, I'm a yeah, big the, fan." The minute Jay answers the Skype, Jay, you answer the Skype. Say you're live with Mooch and crap. Just start talking, guys. We're, we'll shut up. Believe me. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, question is, uh, what's your uh, Opinion. What's your take on the Digital Foundry video that they made after the PS4K uh, reveal, which they pretty much based upscaling for 30 minutes straight and HDR for 30 minutes straight? Okay. Uh, but all oh, the upscaling stuff, right? Like it's interesting because Sony was saying, oh, there's, you know, they 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 shied away from actually saying upscale. So Digital Foundry did confirm that it was like they're using a lot of upscale and things like that. And I guess like HDR light is kind of what the way they described it. So, um, you know, I mean, look, you can't flat out lie about something. Like, a lot of times what Digital Foundry does, they'll give the PlayStation version of a game a win, which 
will be based on opinion. Even if both are the exact same, they'll do that. So what Digital Foundry is doing here is they, because other people have this equipment now and run their own tests and stuff, so they have to be honest and say, well, you know, it's HDR light or it's not true 4K or whatever. Um, and so I think that people are still confused as the PS4 Pro do 4K native, which um, I guess a couple of games it will, like last gen remasters or um, I guess that uh, Skyrim multi online multiplayer game. But for the most part, it's not, you know. So digital. Well, the thing about the, the thing about digital foundries, and listen, we're not going to find this stuff out. I said this a long time ago. We're not going to find this stuff out for a long, long time. Digital foundries is somewhere within the vicinity of Sony's money pockets. Um, you know, here's the thing: they come out, they make these things. When Microsoft does something, you have that that guy who's just he reminds me of Gordon Ramsay. Hello, this is something, something, or another from, and he's just so glum. Hold on. Yeah, go ahead, man. This is Patrick Peters. What's up, Patrick? Pat? What's up, buddy? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Now I can. Go ahead. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm just calling to say that uh, you guys have done a great job. This is a cool idea. Give me your props, man. Look forward to it every week. I wanted to say. Awesome, nice. man. We That's got awesome. a, we got a mark. We love yeah. it. Always good, always good to get a mark. I appreciate that. But you yeah. know, going back to digital foundries real quick, I'll tell you the truth. Um, there's something going on over there, you know, because here, it, could you imagine? I always like to say this: don't listen to just me and crap in our scenarios. Just in your mind, turn the whole situation around. Let's say Microsoft came out this year because they were in trouble with the Xbox One, and they made something that was the Microsoft Xbox One Pro, and all it really did was nothing more than what the S does. Wouldn't Digital Foundry be saying something like, well, there it is again, Microsoft not paying attention, Sony's going to come out with something next year, it's going to destroy them again. Right? We don't see any of that, though, crap. Yeah. It's just defending Sony nonstop. Look at how they really do get the 4K, kind of, not really, kind of, not really. Yeah. That's all I keep seeing videos. Well, well, the interesting thing is, like, did you see, and, and I pointed this out, a developer for Rise of the Tomb Raider who worked on the PS4 version said that it's Sony's PR that that was purposely ambiguous about um, you know about basically letting people know that it's uh, you know a 4K or whatever they they didn't actually say 4K you know so it's upscale that that's going to be the thing it's going to be an upscale thing and I think that uh, you know it's it's misleading just like the HDR thing look somebody who was it uh, Mason that said that earlier yeah uh, HDMI 1.4 can't do true HDR. It can't. What they're yeah. doing is like this light, like half-assed version, and I think that it's 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 upsetting because the media ran with it, and the only place that they called them out was Xbox Mad, right? Like you can't do that. Look at the official facts. You can't do true HDR 10 with HDMI 1.4, and you can't software implement it. So, and also 1080p can't do HDR anyway. You know, you need a 4K. You need a 4K machine. So yeah, I think that it's uh, it's it's ridiculous. Well, let me ask you a question, crap. Is there a different cable in the box that's coming with the S? I think that's a different HDMI cable, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So so that's my point. Like, how are they able to do this? Even if they're able to push it through, and he shout out to Hebot. I don't know if he's on right now, but he was listening the other day on Crossfire. Uh, he was saying what they would do is retract some of the uh, whatever, some of the the actual uh, data that's going through so that they can make room for the HDR, but I don't know how that would actually, I'd have to see more technical writing on it than just the paragraph that he provided me. Um, but uh, if they do it, it's still going to be an HDR light. It's not going to be true HDR. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, just for those in the chat asking how the, the call-in works, right? So when we're actually talking, there's a 10-second delay between what me and Mooch are saying and when you guys hear it. So how the call-ins work is Jay Williams is the only one you're going to be able to hear, and he's going to say, you're on live with Mooch and Crap. And then you just have to like say your name if you want and then ask your question or comment, and then that's basically it, and then we'll, we'll, we'll have to answer it, but you have to hang up at that time because what happens is there's such a delay it makes it impossible to just talk back and forth like we would on the phone. Yeah, and I so. think one thing just to make it more clear too to the audience is you guys are hearing it crystal clear and on time. The caller hey, is the only the only person who can't we understand go. what we're saying is the caller. Yeah, go we ahead, got somebody. Go ahead. So we've got Colin here on the line. Oh, he left. Oh, there for nice. a second. That's nice to see. 
yeah, but but anyway, so yeah, it's like, and we're work again. We're working through the this process. This is the first episode. We expected some issues and things like that, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, I think I think it's going well. When like the sound quality and stuff, especially considering we're getting a lot of people from different countries and things like that, which is actually blowing my mind. I mean, uh, people from Germany, England. Uh, what was that other one from? La- uh, Latvia. Yeah. You know, no, and don't get me wrong. Like I said, folks, I said it at the early part of the show. This is, it's not – everyone likes to use the word beta, right? Or yeah. excuse me, uh, a tech uh, – this is a tech yeah. test alpha. Caller, long-time listener. Um, I got a question for both of you. I'm a uh, hardcore X- Xbox guy. I got a 4K TV, Xbox One S. And I got my OG Xbox for 100 bucks that I could sell. But why would I get a PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Slim, or a PlayStation Pro? I'm going to play my multiplats on my Xbox. Can somebody sell me on a PlayStation Pro, please? Thanks. I uh, First of all, well done on the call, sir. And I'll tell you this much. Uh, I love to sell people things, right? That's what I do. Uh, let me tell you what I can't do. I can't sell you a PS4. Um Here's the thing, and it, let's let's take the hate and the bias out of it. Multiplats are predominantly bought in the Xbox community uh, on the Xbox because you want to be part of this social community. The amazing time we had last night on Overwatch, this what we're doing today to get the community involved. Um, that so that right there, I can't talk you into it. And the graphical capability that people used to say was such a big deal, crap says it all the time. The 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 P's conversation is 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 gone. Uh, the Xbox One S is ramping up and giving you probably 10 to 11 percent better on the CPU side and graphical boost up in the 4K upscaling. So you don't need that if you have an Xbox One S. The other thing is, is there's no games coming to PlayStation. How am I supposed to sell you a gaming console when they don't have anything coming out? They canceled Gran uh, Turismo Sport. Uh, they have that Last Guardian coming out that nobody cares about. Nobody cares. Listen, I don't care what anybody says. They're going to sell very few units of that. That's a niche thing that people... Most new gamers don't even know what that game is. They don't know what it stems from. The hype train left about four or five years ago on that. And then Horizon Event Zero, listen, don't tell me you're excited about it. Wait till the game comes out and see. Guerrilla Games makes a very beautiful game with zero story and it's a who gives a, it's a, it's a, who oh, gives a shit go. factor. We got somebody. Go ahead. Um, so that they should continue with this because it's like a really, really... Um, it's a nice thing to interact with um, your fans and also people who agree with you. And to Mooch, um, I sent him an invite to the preview program so I could get back in it. And um, I had a really nice discussion with him on Twitter earlier with some other guy called Paul who didn't sound like he knew what he was talking about. But anyways, um, I really like the show. And, yeah, keep up the great work. Thank you. Awesome. Thank awesome. you for marking out. And, yo, thank you for sending me that preview. I did see that. Uh, I, am, I am already in the preview program. I believe when you get a, when you get a new console, whether it's the, the old fat one that you got a new one uh, or you got the Xbox One S, you have to go back into the preview app and you have to re-register your console and then, it, and then our Microsoft evaluates to see that you're on the list and you know that your your Xbox Live account is on the list, and then they send it through. So I didn't. I had my Xbox One S set up for a while, and I'm like, how come I'm not getting these? And then GKB said, did you register it again? I said, oh, I forgot about that. So I did it like a day ago. So I'm hoping that I get the new update today or tomorrow. But um, regardless, um, no, thank you for that. I do appreciate it, and that's awesome to get a grade like that. I think that you know the key thing, crap. We we did this a while ago on BGST, but the reason it's working here is that we're we're allowing the audience to hear them as they are a not not like they're a third party caller, but it it brings them right into the mix. Yeah, I agree. I agree, hundred um, percent. You know what I mean? And again, this is the first episode, so there's a little bit of we're feeling stuff out. Things are gonna get smoother and smoother as we go along. Uh, right. You know what I mean? So yeah, and you guys will get. You know, we'll we'll understand how, what to do a little bit better as far as like the delay and things like that. You know, you'll hop in your name, ask your question, say your comment or whatever, and things like that. And we're also gonna have like, you know, the funny thing was we had different things planned, and the interactions has been so good that we didn't even get to hit on most of the topics. Yeah, we have other things that we were gonna do, but I, we I had a top really... five countdown. So yeah. <laughs> like we were gonna do our top five countdown of games for this year so far, and it looks like we didn't really get to do that. Okay, we got a phone call. What's up? Put them on, Jay. Let them know. Let them know they're on live with Moochie Crap in the morning. It's Moochie Crap. Moochie Crap. <laughs> that damn. Song. All right, how you doing, Graphic God, Crap Gamer Mooch? Question for y'all: Do y'all yeah, think 
Bell Bell uh, Scorpio exclusive, or will they bring that out beforehand? Thanks and peace. Do do we think that there'll be Scorpio exclusives, or is that what that's he asked? what I heard? Jay, did you hear that? Did he ask for a particular game? Well, we know that there's no, there's not going to be any Scorpio exclusive except for VR stuff. Right. I well, I th- I was wondering if he said like I'm making this up. I don't know if he said. Do you think Crackdown Three will be an Xbox uh, Scorpio exclusive? But I think maybe what we should answer is more what you said. Crap. Will there be Scorpio exclusives? Meaning that like games that only play on that. I think you're gonna see Scorpio exclusives, but you're not gonna see them until like uh, a year and a half, two years into the into that generation. Yeah. So so Microsoft they've already said that there's not gonna be Scorpio exclusives. But what the Scorpio people are getting are the PC versions of these games, the higher end versions. So you're gonna get like the the real good textures, not the same deal as the PS4 Pro, where they're using you know 1080p renders and things like that and upscaling them. You're gonna see like 4K textures and things like that. I can imagine there's gonna be some hefty installs for uh, Scorpio game versions of games or whatever, but you are going to be able to play multiplayer games against people on Xbox One, Xbox One S, or whatever, so I think that that's pretty cool, and they probably just throttle yeah. back the... Listen, crap, I'm, I got no... And I think the uh, gentleman that called in just before this this guy did, uh, he, he nailed it when he said it. I was in a conversation earlier today. People are doing the same ridiculous response to what the UWP is, Universal Windows Platform, and what Windows 10 is going to be capable to do. People don't seem to understand. This is the same negativity we got with the cloud. And now you don't believe in the cloud? Go play Titanfall 1, then go play Titanfall 2, and look at what the cloud does. When you have actual interaction, the world is alive. It's able to do other things, even if it's just background, that make the game feel more immersive. So my point being here is that when you put a game... Crackdown 3, okay? Crackdown 3, let's say it's a a launch with the Scorpio. But Crackdown 3 is going to play on your Xbox One S and Xbox One Day 1. When you go to put the game in physical disc or you play the game digitally... The, 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 the hardware will know, the software will then speak to the hardware and up res or down as it needed. People don't seem to understand that, like, no, Microsoft can't do that, that's black magic. No, it's not. It's, it's, it's real, it's technology, it exists. And it's nothing that's beyond any kind of comprehension, right? PC games, PC yeah. developers, those are ports. This is the same thing. The software is going to do the porting for us now. You know, And people don't seem to understand that crap, that when you have Crackdown 3, it's going to look better on a Scorpio than it is on an Xbox One S. And they're like, that's impossible. They're going to be dumbing down Scorpio games. No, they're not. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think people understand that they're able to do that, uh, to have two graphical capabilities, but yet running off of, like, one piece of software. Because that's what UWP does. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's going to be something that uh, that that's very exciting. Like, we're not getting... Like, the PS4 Pro is basically playing the same games on the PS4, where, so there's not really an advantage there, whereas the Scorpio is going to get like the PC higher-end versions, which I love because that takes away a lot of ammo from PlayStation gamers and PC gamers, right? You know, oh, we, I got the PC version. I can play that. Well, guess what, man? We, I got the Scorpio version, chump. I can play in 4K all day. You know what I mean? That's all day. Right. No, and that, that's, that's exactly where I'm at with this whole thing. I mean, I, I don't know. Like I say, I, I, I don't understand why people keep thinking when Microsoft says... It's not like Microsoft is like a company down the road that like just came up with something in an incubator lab. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. these are big, big... This is like the, the second or third or first at times, depending if you're going by monetarily, largest company in the world. Hi, we have cloud computing. F you, you don't know what you're talking about. What do you do, sir? I sell hot dogs on corners. All right, all right. So calm down. Why do you, you don't believe Microsoft can do these things? Like, who are these people that are saying this all the time? Like, they, there's no such thing as the cloud. There's no such thing as UWP. Uh, who are you? Yeah. You know what hey, I mean? Like, hey, there was no such thing as HDR either until Sony yeah. came out and announced yeah, HDR, it. Right? HDR is a fan. That's stupid. Uh, Sony. Yeah. Andrew House came out in his helium voice. We are hey now guys, presenting we have, HDR. We have Holy HDR. shit! I gotta get an HDR TV. HDR. Uh, yeah. And then hold on, you gotta be uh, what's his name? Uh, Mark Cerny. Guys, HDR. It's really nice. I this is how a... you use it. Mark Cerny. Excuse me, Mark Cerny. Could you tell us a little bit about how you came up with the PS4 Pro? Well, I started by making pretty little trees, and then when I got done, oh, is that Bob Ross? I'm sorry. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> Why would you listen? I'm an engineer. Do not let an engineer take the stage unless they have ridiculous stage presence. Mark Cerny, get back to the lab. You don't belong on a stage. I'm sorry. I don't give a shit. It was a bad presentation. I don't think Jack Trenton could have saved that. 
<laughs> oh yeah, I mean that that was difficult. That was a difficult one uh, to to do or anything like that. Yo, Jay, do we have any uh, any more callers? Uh, no one's been calling in. No. No, nobody's calling in. Damn, we already died off that fast, huh? Well, no, it's not that. I think that we did tell everybody twelve o'clock, and now it is. It's we did a twenty minute buffer after. So I would say that we would say, you know, let's do an outro and uh, and tell everybody a little bit about next week and and what time they can meet us. Okay, so next, yeah, next week we'll be doing uh, Mooch and Crap in the morning on Mooch's channel, and we're gonna advertise it like crazy this week, uh, all over, so you guys will know, and we'll get his. Uh, his channel and stuff. I got his Twitter and everything linked in the description below, and so what you guys will be able to find that. I think it's going to be, I would say, between 10:30 and 11:30 is when it's going to start. Um, we'll we'll narrow that down. I'll know more as the week goes on. Um, you know, as far as that goes, and we're gonna we'll actually get to do our top five games. I think that should be something that uh, people will actually look forward to. So we're going to give our, our thoughts on the top five games of, of this year so far and probably have a lot of other cool stuff. I mean, what do you think, Mooch? Absolutely. I, you know, like I said, I want to thank everybody for coming out today. And, and give us uh, thanks for giving us today and giving us next week to really just kind of – there's a lot of stuff that we still have planned uh, that is completely and utterly uh, one-on-one -on -one with the audience. We don't want the audience just sitting there listening – we want you guys to be able to be as an active part of this as, as much. Make, make, you guys are directing. You guys may not realize this, but me and Crap wrote a bunch of topics. You have to have topics ready if need be. But I don't know if anybody realized this, but the audience decided where the show went. So, yeah, which which was really good. Yeah, yeah. and and then like shout out She Wolf and everybody. She's been con controlling the chat, which is good because man, I mean, we had almost 450 people watching on a morning when football starts. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, you guys all did really, uh, really great thing, and over 300 likes. In, that's incredibly impressive. Like this couldn't have started off any better. We all thought that it was gonna be. We we figured we had, to, and we're gonna have to continue to build on it. It's gonna continue to get better. I can promise you that it's going to, and it's something unique, and I fully expect other people to try to bite on what we're doing. But remember who started it. Yeah, well, <laughs> you, you know, know I, mean? thing, I want to let the audience know something else too, because we've said it a couple of times. I'm going to make it very clear. You will get a lot of advertisement for this show throughout the week from me and Crap, and I believe we're going to even possibly try to get a small 15 second video put together. My point being is, you'll always know the time and what channel. So don't be like, oh, I'm confused. Did you say 10:30 or 11? Is it Moose or Crap? You will know if you follow us on Twitter. You're actually going to probably start writing to us saying, "We got it. We know when you're on." So yeah. my point being is, don't be, don't say you won't know. We'll make sure that everybody's well aware of what channel and what time. But predominantly, just if you think 10:30 uh, is on Sunday mornings, you're never going to be late. Let's yeah. put it that way. And and yes, we hear you. There's going to be merchandise and stuff like that. We'll have uh, we'll have the producer Jay Williams working on that stuff. Because uh, I already see people asking, where can I get an MNC morning I want, shirt? I want an MNC morning uh, coffee mug. Coffee I want mug, a yeah. Coffee mug, because this is what it's all about. It's all about mornings, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and nobody's nobody's doing something like this. So make sure you guys write down. If you haven't, if you wanted, if you like the call in idea and you want to call in, download Skype on your phone or whatever. MC mornings, one word, and then you'll be able to call us in on Skype, and we'll answer live, and you'll get to talk, and you you got to learn about the delays and stuff like that. But um, Hopefully the delays are just. Oh, we're also doing something else, guys. We should let the audience know. We're also going to be doing uh, voice ma uh, voicemails too. So you'll be able to call uh, eventually MC Mornings on Skype, and you'll be able to leave a, a message with all you know. And then we'll actually have it. We'll, we'll go to a point where we do like uh, you know our mail. We'll say we'll do our voicemail, and Jay will actually play it, and it'll have your name. Uh, make sure you give all your credentials so people can start to follow you and ask us a question. So we're going to do live, and we're going to do uh, voicemails that we have in our inbox. Yeah. And in That's case you guys, well. and in case you guys missed the intro song, Jay, are you ready? Jay, are you ready to hit us with an intro to go outro? Jay Williams. Jay check, Williams, check. the producer, who's on mute. I have to turn me up. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna you crank you up. Crank him up. And we're gonna say thank you everybody for joining. Go ahead and hit that stuff, Jay. Yeah, thanks everybody. We'll catch thanks, you. Everybody, next we'll Sunday. catch you guys later. <laughs>